The sun has set on the month of August, and it is now September 1st and week one in the WPIAL, as we wish you a pleasant good evening here at the Woodland Hills Wolverine. Woodland Hills 0-1, the Gateway Gators 0-1. The Gators coming off of a road loss to Mount Lebanon while the Woodland Hills Wolverines lost at home to the Central Catholic Vikings. Adam Gusky, Vince Russo on the call for you this evening out in the bleachers at the fabled Woodland Hills Wolverine. Vince, as we take a look back for the Gateway Gators a week ago, a very tough outing for Gateway. Some bright spots, but certainly a struggle overall. Yeah, it all started in the trenches, Adam. Mount Lebanon was big, they were physical, and they put the WPIL on notice, a team that was supposed to be having a down year, a coaching transition. They came out, played incredibly well, and the Gators looked a little disheveled in week zero, but there were some bright spots. The defense held in there, were on the field for most of the game and really didn't sort of collapse until later in the contest. Kept the Gators in, but the offense wasn't able to get enough done. Only a rushing touchdown from Brad Birch in the fourth quarter. As we take a look at that gateway offense, obviously Birch had that touchdown. We saw a few flashes from Jaquan Reynolds, but the player we're going to talk about first is Derek Selby, the receiver, who stuffed the stat sheet a good bit a week ago. Yeah, five receptions, not a ton of yards, but was a good safety valve and was dependable, sure-handed for the Gators in that first contest. And he is someone who was a role player last year who showed some flashes behind some other talented receivers. And this year has the opportunity to step up as an upperclassman and gain a little bit more of the workload and some more targets. And so we'll see if that comes to fruition. But week zero was a good first showing for Selby. On the other side of the football, Donovan Biggs was laying the lumber from that safety spot. My goodness, he sure was. And you know, Remy Bowe's not playing early in this season out with the, with an injury. And so it's going to be other guys that have to step up and be not only the physical but spiritual leaders of this defense. And it looked like Biggs was really trying to lay the lumber and, and set a tone on behalf of that defense. And they're going to need that. They're going to need guys to step up and have that passion and energy to help carry this traditionally very talented and passionate Gators defense. An old rivalry renewed as the Gateway Gators take on the Woodland Hills Wolverines for the fourth season in a row. And while Gateway has won three straight games against the Woodland Hills Wolverines, what's really notable about the game a season ago was the emergence of Cam Walter, the Woodland Hills quarterback. Yeah, and he had some bright spots. You know, the Wolverines fell 43-7 in that week zero contest to a very, very good Central Catholic team. But Walter still had about 200 yards passing, a 61-yard connection to Scoop Smith, who I know we're going to talk to, talk about rather as well. And so there were some flashes there. He's got the size, he's got the arm strength, and he's only a sophomore. So there, if you're a Wolverines fan, there's a lot to look forward to in the future with Walter behind center. And you mentioned Scoop Smith, an athlete extraordinaire for the Woodland Hills Wolverines, a two-sport guy, and he has Division I offers both in football and basketball. And another 10th grader. So again, you talk about the Wolverines, excited about this season and trying to get back to the semifinals and compete at a high level, but also having a lot of youth movement on that offensive side of the ball. And Smith, he's only 5'6", so to get those D1 offers, you know he's got a ton of speed. He's someone, we talked about last week, a 61-yard connection, eight touchdowns last season and only a little over 30 receptions. He is someone who can take it to the house every time he touches the ball and even had over 30 yards on just two carries last week against Central Catholic. So they do a good job of sprinkling him into the offense and making sure he gets his touches. Let's talk about the Gateway Gators very quickly again. Brad Birch, the four-year starter at quarterback, three years here at Gateway, not in the lineup tonight. So a lot of weight on the shoulders of El Cidro Bryant. And Brian's got the size. We haven't seen any of him in game action, so making his first start an unproven commodity, as they would say. But 6'2", 200 pounds, he's going to have that going for him. And you wonder if the offense will roll through Jaquan Reynolds a little bit more, if they'll try and establish that run early. They weren't able to last week. Uh, you know, they were really hemmed in on what they were able to do offensively in the running game. And Reynolds, though he had double-digit carries, only had about 35 yards, 42 all-purpose yards in total in the game. They're going to want to get him involved more if they're going to be successful against Woodland Hills, especially without number 12 behind center. And while we have about 30 seconds until kickoff, Vince, let's talk about this rivalry. Of course, it dates back to 1987, the first season of Woodland Hills, when the Woodland Hills Wolverines defeated a then nationally ranked Gateway Gators team, the defending state champions. And it's been tooth and nail ever since, though. Gateway has won the last three meetings, a very cold meeting here at the Wolverine back in 2020. And that was followed up by two convincing home wins by the Gateway Gators. Yeah, a nail-biter three years ago. The Gators held on for a 21-16 win here in the 
the cold of the Wolverine. I came down to a defensive possession where the Gators really had to dig in and stop the Wolverines. They had a last gasp chance to win. Then the last couple of years, a little more comfortable for the Gators, a 40 to 21 victory with a big second half. Uh, and then last year, a 21 nothing shutout where they were able to really control the game, much like how we saw Mount Lebanon do against the Gators last week. Captain's out there at the middle of the field getting set uh, to get this game underway as the sun is setting here in Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania. And that's a very good thing for your two broadcasters because as we look to our right-hand side, clearly the sun favoring that side. Our crew ready here on GatewayGatorProductions.com to get you set for this old matchup between the visiting Gateway Gators and the Woodland Hills Wolverines. And Vince, it's going to be a good one. It sure is. Both of these teams, a lot to prove. And, you know, as they always say, you throw everything out when it's a rivalry game like this. And we see year in and year out, these two teams really get up for this one. The communities really get up for this one. We know fans are still filtering in. There's still good bit of empty seats, but I anticipate this crowd will only get larger as we head into the first quarter here. Yeah, as you take a look at the plaza down to our right-hand side, it's very evident that fans are still pouring into the Wolverina. And, you know, this is quite literally bordering communities just up the road here. You've got Turtle Creek meeting Monroeville, two of the primary communities in Gateway School District and Woodland Hills School District. Well, you got to get to the concessions before you get to your seats, so... No surprise that folks are, are still filtering in. But, yeah, I mean, a hop, skip, and a jump. You see it any time the Gators play Woodland Hills, any time they play Penn Hills. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, these guys grew up playing youth sports together. There's a lot of folks that know each other, and you see that after the games, a lot of conversations. But for these next 48 minutes, they're not friends. They're uh, they're not neighbors. They're, uh, they're enemies, and we'll see who comes out on top. Brian Tarrant, the new head coach of the Woodland Hills Wolverines, the first head coach not of the George Novak regime. George Novak coached for many, many years. In fact, the field here is named for Coach Novak. He was then replaced by Tim Bostert, who was relieved of duties last year. And now Brian Tarrant takes the reins, and he's got big shoes to fill, quite literally trying to pick up where Coach Novak and later Coach Bostert left off. That's the third coach in program history, and certainly a lot of expectations from a storied program. Jacob Ross will kick off for Woodland Hills, is back deep to return for Gateway. Kenny Lewis. And we are underway in Turtle Creek, PA, as this one carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback, where it'll be first and 10 for the Gateway Gators at the 20 yard line. We saw the Gators go down the field almost precision-like last week against Mount Lebanon and got the ball from their 33-yard line. Adam all the way down to the 11-yard line of Mount Lebanon before that option right. Birch attempted the pitch to Reynolds. That one got loose and it was returned the other way by Patrick Smith from Mount Lebanon, 89 yards. Let's see here what that offensive approach looks like with Bryant behind center, but the Gators had a lot of momentum early in that game and never looked like the same team after that turnover. So we talked about it. Sid Bryant, the quarterback for the Gateway Gators. To his right, Jaquan Reynolds. And the shotgun and the handoff to Reynolds, and he's got nowhere to go as he is met immediately in the backfield by Lanier Butler. That's not what you want to see if you're the Gators. Certainly wasn't to be super unexpected. The, the Gators might try to go to the ground and establish the run right away. But again, we saw last week the real issue for the Gators was not being able to, to protect up front and there. The floodgates open once again. High snap, toss, near side left, complete. Selby, Selby across the 20, out towards the 26 yard line. So the Gators pick up decent yardage there and make it a third and much more manageable four. Absolutely, makes this you can run, you can pass, you got some options here, and you don't have to chuck it all that far downfield. Looks like we're gonna have a stoppage in play. Official's Official on time. that far side asking for that stoppage. I'm not sure what the issue may be. Things are back in order, and it's Bryant. Hard count and breaching the neutral zone. Lanier Butler, who had the big play on the first play from scrimmage. Dead ball. Neutral zone infraction by the defense. Number 13. Five yard penalty results in a first down. So, first and 10 for Gateway at the 31. 
Bryant, shotgun. Good snap. Bryant, straight drop back, setting up the screen. Complete. Reynolds to the 40, the 50. Shoulder out of bounds inside of Woodland Hills territory. Tackle by Brandon Jones, but a big gainer for the Gators. And great protection there. Sid Bryant had all day to let that play set up, as you'll see on the replay. They just gave him just a ton of time to be able to get settled and get that ball into Reynolds' hands. And then a good job getting downfield, opening up space. And movement early by Gateway. And I think it may have been Selby on this near side with the false start. No, it'll be the left tackle. And Mandy. Well, Adam, I think you could have taken your pick there. There were a few folks. It looked like just a miscommunication across the board on the hard count there. So first and 15, the ball moved back into Gators territory to the 49. Bryant getting the play, called in from the sideline. Trips to the right again. High snap, play action, looking left, throwing left. Pass deflected, nice defensive play there by Amir Brown. Brown timing that leap well and getting it away from Selby for the incomplete pass. Certainly good defense, but Brian didn't really get all of that one. You see not a lot of zip on that one. A little, little wobbly there on the throw, so you think maybe if he's able to pull that one down ever so slightly that maybe that timing route works out a little better with Selby on the outside there. Bryant looking right, pressured, setting up the screen again, and this time too strong for Reynolds. And if that pass is complete, that's a Gators TD. Yeah, that's good pressure. Ziggy Moore, as they're announcing on the PA, you'll see him at the bottom of your screen getting in there. And again, yeah, Adam, if Bryant has about another half second to get rid of that one, that one's probably a no doubt six points for the Gators. But good pressure there. It's those little games of inches, those little split seconds that make such a big difference at this level of football. Bryant stepping up into the pocket, looking about, thinking about tucking and running. Instead, he'll be wrapped and brought down by Lanier Butler, and that's the second time Butler is in the backfield making a big play for the Woodland Hills Wolverines. And there was some time there initially. If you're Bryant, you just got to get rid of the ball a little quicker. Try to find something downfield or make that decision. Tuck it, run, make something happen. Sort of tried to do the best of both and did nothing there. And so what looked like a productive drive for the second week in a row. They get into opponent territory, but see it stall out without any points. Whistles coming from the far side and a timeout taken by Woodland Hills. And I don't know if it was you know, I, I don't know if it was formational or if, it, or if the issue was something with uh, the people out on the field, but whatever it was, it's a shame for the Wolverines to use a timeout this early on what can be a reasonably innocuous special teams play. Yeah, two minutes and nine seconds in, and you have to, to burn a timeout. Super frustrating. Gators need to be careful here and take account. This will be the first time we see Scoop Smith out on the field and an opportunity to, to impact the game and score points. They'll be back there at the punt returner position. So keep your eyes on number one. I wouldn't be surprised if they try and kick it the opposite way or kick it out of bounds away from Smith. You'd almost opt for a slightly shorter punt than giving him an opportunity to hurt you in the return game. So punting for Gateway will be Blake Marsh, 5'9", senior. Both the kicker and punter for Gateway. And back deep for Woodland Hills, Brandon Jones. And he'll be flanked on the right side by Scoop Smith, the 5'6 sophomore, who is lightning in a bottle. Good snap. And the punt away with no pressure. End over end kick. Takes one hop and smooth. Uh, Scoop Smith is going to catch it and be wrapped up. Gators all around him as he catches that one, and not much of a return at all, at all as Carlos Diggs down at the bottom of the pile for Gateway. Yeah, good job keeping an eye on both the ball and on Smith, and like you said, as soon as he caught that one, they were, they were on him. And so that one could have had a little more juice under it, but you hem them in just a little bit. But good field position for the Wolverines here starting out, see if they can make something of it here, Walter and Smith and company. They wanted to establish the run last week. They talked about they have a lot of size inside, but 
Weren't able to do so last week against Central Catholic. Walter in the pistol. Hands off, hesitation by the back, and he'll be wrapped and brought down. Not much room there as he is stacked up and brought down. Elijah Nesby in the back on that play for the Woodland Hills Wolverines. TJ Mitchell, amongst others, on the tackle for the Gateway Gators. So you'll see down there there's some real size for the Wolverines. It's just will they be tenacious enough as you've got five linemen, all five linemen averaging more than 270 pounds down there on the line. So they've got the size, but can they, can they use that to move bodies, open up holes? It's been yet to be seen here from week zero into this one. Pistol again, Walter, hands off. Nesby bouncing off of tacklers, then is met at the 35, leans forward to the 36. So Nesby getting the bulk of the carries coming into the season, the ball carrier to keep an eye on for Woodland Hills senior Brandon Jones. 5'8", 185 pounds, had over 500 yards and five touchdowns, averaged about five yards a carry last season. He was someone that they were really looking to be a high impact kind of guy in these games. Two backs flanking Walter. Walter, straight drop back, looks right, throws right, pass. Going very deep, well over the head of all players, defensive backs, as well as the intended receiver, Corday Weems, whose dad played at Woodland Hills back in the mid-1990s. He'll take that, good coverage by the Gators. So in all likelihood, that'll bring the punt team out. And so quick three and out, try to get your offense back on the field and try to win this field position battle a little bit. Jacob Mraz, second time we see him today. He kicked off and now will punt as Kenny Lewis is back deep to return for the Gateway Gators. Nice punt by Mraz. A knuckler carrying to that far side, takes one hop to the boundary. And it'll be first and 10 for Gateway at the 35, so decent starting field position for drive number two for the visitors. There's a flag on the play. So the flag over there on that far side. And the officials have to iron this one out, and we will get the call momentarily from our referee. And Vince, good call on the crowd still pouring in because there has been a steady stream There's no foul on the play. since we got here, basically, of fans coming in, filling up both the near side of Gateway fans and the far side with Woodland Hills fans. You know, these rivalries are, are so great. And luckily, high school for the most part, even in the non-conference, even though uh, you know, Woodland Hills, Penn Hills over in the Northeast Conference in 5A, and Big East for Gateway. It's so timely to talk about some of the stuff to see what's happening in college football at the collegiate level. Uh, but luckily here, these school districts and the WPIL have done such a good job of preserving, allowing a lot of these teams to continue playing. And this is a game that you can tell these communities really get up for every year. Toss, Reynolds. Reynolds trying to go against the grain and he'll be hit and brought down. And again, it's Lanier Butler right at the line of scrimmage. He is everywhere from that defensive end spot. Yeah, he's been a real difference maker thus far. Again, up tempo. Gators staying true to what they wanted to do in the preseason. Bryant straight drop back, tosses near side. Reynolds, three black jerseys in front of him and he'll spin his way forward for a gain of about one as the tackle is Amir Brown, the cornerback, the 5'8", junior. I know the Gators haven't been able to really establish the run in between the tackles, but going to have to do something other than the continued screen pass to Reynolds. The Gators, are, or the Wolverines, are just they're ready for it. They've seen it happen you know, just about two out of every three plays. Motion man Lewis from left to right, play action. This a true screen to Reynolds. Reynolds can't escape the Wolverines. Nice gang tackling by the host Wolverines. Tackle by Andre Smith. Also in on the stop for Woodland Hills, Jaden Estes. And not very often you're going to see 
your running back get three receptions for two yards on a drive here. As they they kind of dressed it up a little different every single time, but it was, a, in essence, sort of the same play call. And uh, the Wolverines were ready for it all three times there. So it's Blake Marsh to kick this one away. Great snap. Marsh gets it away. A low uh, punt that'll take a bounce. Hits off of a Gateway Gator and will be downed by Tristan Houston back at the 30-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Woodland Hills Wolverines. And obviously the strategy, keep the ball away from Scoop Smith. But in that instance, you may be well served if you're Houston. Let that ball continue to roll because I don't think Smith is going to risk coming over to pick it up. Yeah, a little overzealous on that one. Likely cost the Gators probably a half a dozen or so yards. But... You still pin them at their 30. They got a ways to go. And this is a, an offense that has been billed as potentially dynamic, but we haven't seen it just yet. New QB, Brandon Jones, the Wildcat. He'll carry left. The Gators appeared ready for it initially, and Jones was able to elude the first wave, but not the second wave of visiting Gateway Gators. And the stop is made. It'll bring up second down and a long nine, or maybe a short 10. So there's Jones. We saw him get 15 carries last week, was the real bell cow for the Wolverines. Just 57 yards against that talented Central Catholic defense. Cam Walter just under 200 yards passing, and a bulk of that went to Scoop Smith. Had 130 all-purpose yards, 100 through the air, and of course, that long touchdown. Walter looking left, throwing left. The pass complete to Zykeer Moore, and Moore will take it out towards the 40, but not enough for a first down for the Woodland Hills Wolverines as Kenny Lewis gets involved on the tackle for Gateway. Yeah, and then good job cleaning that one up. I thought Mark Knight might have got in there at the end, but no, that was Lewis laying the boom. That was a strong tackle there by a uh, defensive back that's had a lot of experience for the Gators, one of those upperclassmen. And good job preventing that forward progress and forcing a big third down here. So third down and two. Walter in the pistol. Sends a man in motion. Forward pitch completed. Moore running left. He's got the first down. Donovan Biggs makes the tackle. But a nice gainer there for Woodland Hill. Sets them up first and 10 at the 36-yard line inside of Gators territory. A good play call there. A little misdirection. You think they're going to go with the jet sweep, and then they sort of just sneak it in there. That play's become so popular at all levels of football. Just that, that quick shuttle to the tight end with some misdirection. And that time, the Gators really bit on it, and that led to a lot of open running room there for the ball carrier Moore. Walter, again in the shotgun. Pitch left, Jones running to the right, excuse me. Has a blocker downfield, and Jones carries it inside of the 25, and a flag comes in late. Maybe some contact by the Gators after the play was out of bounds. And if so, that's gonna tack a lot on to the end of this, and what was already a really productive run you see the stiff arm there by Jones. A lot of pleading from the Gators coaching staff down there. Yeah, late shoulder by Mark Knight. I'm just not sure if that shoulder came in while Jones was still in bounds or had he stepped out of bounds already. They're going to wave that flag off. They say that Mark Knight makes that contact while Jones still in bounds. And that will force the officials to wave the flag off as we Certainly, I think that's the, the right call. And it really wasn't a full-on shove. Looked like Knight held up a little bit toward the end of that. So Walter in the pistol with Jones behind him. Trips on the left side. Draw, Jones spinning forward. Solo tackle by TJ Mitchell, the linebacker for the Gators. Good job stymieing the progress there at Jones, who's looked really sharp here in the early going and who's looked fast. Normally we're used to this Gators defense being the most athletic unit on the field, and you 
you see, Dylan Hills really has some athletic guys out there, a lot of speed. We saw it more so on that last carry where Jones was able to get to the edge. We've seen that a couple times here in the early going. Last week, it was Malone, the quarterback for Mount Lebanon, who was able to get to the edge on the Gators. That's not something we're used to seeing this gateway defense to see if they do a better job of hemming things inside and not getting beat on the outside. Walter off of play action. A little bit of happy feet as he retreats. Rolling left, tucks twice, tosses far side. The pass bobbled but caught. And on the reception, Andre Smith over there. And Smith is forced out of bounds after a gain of just one over on that far boundary. And what great pursuit by Roberson Louis June, the sophomore who was just tenacious chasing Walter. Yeah, made it so that Walter really wasn't able to get his eyes fully downfield, just went with the check down. And, you know, Wolverines expended a lot of mental and physical effort there to gain one yard. And more importantly, it sets up a third and long here. Legal man downfield. Offense number 77, five-yard penalty, replay second down. Oh, never mind. So kind of a surprise there. I didn't see the flag, but a flag nonetheless is going to cost Woodland Hills some valuable yardage, though it will be replay second down. As the ball is set at the 36-yard line, the line to gain the 11, excuse me, the 26-yard line, the line to gain is the 11. So that sets it up, second down and 15. So what you see on your screen or on the scoreboard here at Woodland Hills, not correct. Walter, play action, rolling left. Toss through the hands of Scoop Smith as that pass was well high. Smooth had, uh, Scoop had sagged his way in front of Amari Gans and had he caught it, Amari Gans could have laid him out. Absolutely. Sure could if you take a look there. Gans was probably almost wishing he did catch that so he could lay the lumber, but a little bit of a break there because that would have been close to first down yardage had that been caught. Instead, it's going to be third and what seems like a country mile. The officials have a little bit of a rough go of it here. A lot of conferences, a lot of discussion after every flag there. Not quite sure where to put the ball for third down here, but it's, it's just week one for everyone. We're all just getting our bearings. Well, here's some good news, at least for you and me. The sun is below the trees to our right-hand side. And boy, do I feel it. <laughs> it. It feels like it is cooled down about 10 to 15 degrees out here. Walter, looking right, settles his feet, completes the pass to Jones. Jones is hit immediately after catching the ball, and the tackle by Mark Knight will bring up fourth and long for Woodland Hills. We saw Knight a week ago really make an impact out of that linebacker spot. Yeah, and he's, you know, we've called his name a few times already tonight. He's been in and around the action on what seems like every play, and that's what you want from your linebackers. So good play by Knight there. Able to, the tackle initially was a little up high, but he was able to sink down, bring the ball carrier down before or any sort of yards after the catch. And four down territory here just outside of the 20. No field goal attempt, but it's going to be fourth and long. Officially, it's fourth and 12 with Walter in the shotgun. Jones, the side car to his left. Walter has some time, throwing left, the pass complete. Scoop Smith slides through tackles and makes his way across the goal line for a Woodland Hills touchdown. And that's him in action right there. You see it, got just a little bit of separation. And as soon as he made that catch, he is so, so slippery. Take a look, just stops on a dime. Just that next level, that cut right there, that decisiveness, not able to get brought down. And he looks like a guy who's going to be a force to be reckoned with over the next couple of years here and for somebody at the next level, depending on which sport he wants to play. And a beautiful pass by Cam Walter to go along with it. And that's a fourth down bugaboo. Just like last week for the Gateway Gators, we saw Mount Lebanon able to convert on several fourth downs throughout that football game, especially in half number one. PAT for Mraz, and that breaks down as the snap goes awry. And Prince Tarrant Jr., sophomore wide receiver, retreats out towards the 19, trying to make something happen to no avail. The Gators thwart that effort, and with 2.19 to play here in quarter one, it is 
Woodland Hills six, Gateway zero. So for the second week in a row, Woodland Hills sees, or excuse me, Gateway sees their opponent score first. And the Gators had certainly done a good bit of things right, but got to be able to get off the field on fourth down there on fourth and long. And just got bit there by Scoop Smith and the talent that he has. And if you're the Gators, got to try and find a way to put that behind you. And what we saw from the Gators was offense got stymied a little bit early in that game last week. And it seemed like the confidence went away and they sort of pulled within themselves. I'm anxious to see what they try to do here schematically on this drive. Uh, getting Reynolds the ball on those, those dump off passes didn't yield anything the last time. We saw a couple shots by Bryant down the field. See if he pulls the ball down or runs or if they try and reestablish the run with Reynolds. But I think they've got to be able to try and possess the ball a little bit here and not get into what they got into last week. We're having to have their defense bail them out a ton and being on the field a ton in the first half. So Mraz will kick off. Second kickoff of the game for him. He's also punted. This a high hanging kick end over end. Two Gators can uh, carry them off of each other. Kenny Lewis will scoop up the loose ball and Kenny Lewis will be brought down. His forward progress takes him out to the 13. So a very long field to work with here for the Gateway Gators. 87 yards from Pater. Just kept waiting to see if either of those guys were going to communicate and see one and just sort of like that, uh, like two outfielders not communicating. They're lucky that someone picked it up and just got north to south there and got some yards. That's uh, not what you want to have happen after you concede a touchdown. Make it a long, long field for your offense. If they're going to get to pay dirt here, they're going to have to earn it. That's for sure. So let's see what Sid Bryant can do with this Gators possession. In the shotgun with Reynolds to his left. Handoff Reynolds, delay. And Reynolds gets out towards the 15, then he's scooped up and dumped to the turf by Zykeer Moore. Zykeer Moore, linebacker 6'2", 185, the sophomore. Boy, a youth movement for these Wolverines. They've got some young guys that are just playing incredibly well early in the season here. And Moore, like Walter and, and Smith, just another one of them. Bryant pumps. Trying to spin away from pressure, and he'll be wrapped and brought down shy of the 10-yard line. Jaden Estes. Defensive end all over this one. Gators are going to have to find a way to get guys open quick and get the ball out quick. Try and stay on pace here and not fall into what they're at now, which is third and very, very long, 16. Bryant almost standing in his own end zone. Offset pistol, Bryant play action. Tosses to the near side, pass is complete. It's Kenny Lewis, Lewis pulled out of bounds. Now they'll say the pass is incomplete. I guess the first foot came out of bounds. We'll take another look at this one. The flag is down as well. Try to sort this one out. Yeah, taking a look at our replay, it did look like Kenny Lewis's left foot came down first out of bounds as the officials are ironing this one out. Gateway finally returns home next week to the friendly confines of Pete Annamarino Stadium just up the road in Monroeville, Pennsylvania. Their final non-conference tilt of the early portion of the season against the North Hills Indians. And that'll be the Franklin Regional Panthers coming to Monroeville. After the play was over, dead ball. Conduct, number 42. Defense, 15 yards, first down. So the official says that a first down, and now the umpire is going to step in and try to iron this one out a bit. Vince, we talked about it, uh, taking a look at that gateway schedule moments ago. Franklin Regional comes to Monroeville two weeks from tonight. And that's the lone team in conference that defeated the Gators last season, that game in Murraysville. So first and 10 here. And then the Wolverines breach the neutral zone, stepping in early, Andre Smith on that left side. Well, Smith collecting 20 penalty yards in two plays. And my goodness, you talk about a swing in momentum if the Gators are able to, to make something of this. I mean, dead in the water, fourth down inside their own 10 yard line. All of a sudden they got some, some life here out close to the 30 and a chance to hopefully move the ball a little bit here. If anything else, keep the defense fresh and off the field for a bit. 
Play action. Toss right, wide open. Kenny Lewis pulls it in. He stays on his feet inside of the 40, brought down at the 36. My goodness, what a juggle and catch by Lewis. So some laundry on the, on the field. Well, that's going to be a, I think, a legal receiver downfield. That's going to negate that. The one thing I will say, Adam, obviously that's coming back, and that's a, a gut punch for the Gators, but look what happens. They get the ball out quickly, a decisive throw there. They've got athletes in space. That's what we need to see out of this Gators offense is a quick throw, a quick catch, being decisive with the football. So that's an eligible receiver downfield by Kayan Mbendi. Boston Gateway, a big first down into Woodland Hills territory. Hand off to Reynolds, and he's got nowhere to go as Maywan Rose makes the stop. Rose, 6'3", 295 pounds, and he is a low. I don't, you see Reynolds sort of giving the business to some of his teammates, and I can't say that I blame him. Every time in this game he's gotten the ball in the backfield, he's been hit before he's even had his feet set with the ball. They've got to take better care of their ball carrier, or else he's not going to finish this game. Second down and 15. Toss completed. It's Selby. Selby driving his way out across the 30, close to the first down marker. So on second down and about 15, the Gators pick up 15 and enough for a Gators first down. Yeah, again, a quick pitch and catch. They're able to get Selby with a little bit of space. A couple good blocks there, and they're able to open up some space for him to make something happen. Love to see that out of this Gators offense, see if they can keep that up. Finally, a little bit of running room for Reynolds there as he's able to dive close to the 40. That's something, Adam, you really love to see. They have not been able, maybe his choice words there for his teammates, put a little pep in their step because he'd been getting hit in the backfield every single time and now finally able to, you know, and a good second effort there too, my goodness. But it had been tough sledding for Reynolds up until that one. Low snap, uh-oh, Brian's gonna have to retreat and scoop this one up, try to make something out of nothing. Tosses it near side to the left. And this will be intentional grounding, I do believe. Gateway fans say there was a receiver in the nearby vicinity. The officials are going to try to iron this one out. I don't know that there was, Adam. I really don't. It did look like Ter uh, Derek Selby was that far away. The officials still trying to iron this one out. They are going to say intentional, intentional grounding. Five yards from the spot of the foul, loss of down, and this ball is all the way back to the 14-yard line with a line to gain across the 40 to the 42-yard line. So it's third down and 28 right now. These are just situations good football teams can't get themselves into. A lot of time. Woodland Hills all over that one as the screen pass intended for Reynolds is complete. But George Hill saw that one coming from a mile away and made the play. It's just, uh, it's just a play. I think the Gators have gone to too many times, frankly, in this first half. The fifth time we've seen a screen pass, three of them came in consecutive plays. And so the Wolverines are, are ready for that. They, they've seen it in film. They've seen it a bunch of times already here tonight. And as we end the first quarter, what a, a swing of momentum in both ways. This drive looked dead in the water. Penalty allowed them to continue with a couple quick penalties in a row. And after the play, personal foul penalty, and then another five yards jumping offside by Andre Smith. Then the Gators put, you know, kick themselves in the gut and go backwards in a hurry. Looking ahead for the Woodland Hills Wolverines, their season will continue as they'll hit the road next year, or next week, rather. Their first road game of the season. Talked about how uh, Gateway will finally return home next week, and that's got to be a relief after having to travel to Mount Lebanon last week, play on a 
ridiculously warm and humid evening. Things got a little bit cooler as, as the night went on, at least in comparison to what it was like earlier in the day. Conversely, here at the Wolverine, now that the sun has gone down, it's a beautiful late summer evening. Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. It really does feel great. It's 76 and sunny. And that, that big number there, the humidity, that's a lot lower than what it was last week. And Boy, I tell you what, in that press box at Mount Levin, it felt like we were sitting in a steam room, and there were no shortage of bodies in there either with us. So it's, uh, you know, we're out in the stands tonight. Uh, frankly, I love it. I love sitting out here. You're amongst the people. You really get to feel the emotion both in the stands and down on the field. We have a great vantage point for tonight's game. Good snap. Punt away by Marsh, taking a hop. And it will be caught by Gateway. Jackson Smith. And it was not a great punt by any stretch of the imagination. And this will be first and 10 for Woodland Hills, very deep inside of Gateway territory at the 37. And we're seeing what we saw last week, the inability for the Gators to move the ball effectively and, and the miscues on offense driving them backwards and punting deep within their own territory, thus setting up their opponent with really good field position. We saw at one point last week against Mount Lebanon, the Blue Devils had three consecutive possessions inside Gators territory. You're asking a lot out of your defense. and You're really making it difficult to win football games when you're giving field position like that to your opponent. Hand off, Jones running left. And there's a flag down in the Woodland Hills backfield as Jones picked up a yard or two. Jacob Santo on the tackle. And the officials will let us know what this penalty is. Illegal shift, two men moving prior to the snap. So an illegal shift against the Woodland Hills Wolverines is going to push them five yards back, and this has been far from a clean game for both of these teams. No, very sloppy, and we are still only in week one. We're still in the non-conference slate, but you know, on the Gators' end, we didn't see nearly as many penalties last week as we've seen in the early going in this one. Hand off, Jones bouncing right, bound to crease, dancing his way forward, and finally brought down by Carlos Diggs. You can tell Jones looks every bit of that senior. There's some good patience there. He's got a few moves in the arsenal. and Sneakily speedy out there. You see he's got sort of a second burst. And uh, I think what I really appreciate about him is you can tell he's looking to initiate contact. He's not trying to run away from anyone out there. He's able to put his head down, get a few extra yards there, and bring this back to second and not too, too far for the Wolverines. Yeah, second and eight, gain of seven ultimately for Jones on that carry to the right-hand side. So Jones, the sidecar to the left side of the sophomore, Cam Walter. Walter off of play action, hitches left, steps right, tosses. Caught by Scoot Smith for a Woodland Hills touchdown. You can't let that guy get behind you. Well, the Gators did just that, and Smith Caught that one against sort of his lap there, it almost looked like, and was able to take that one in for an easy score. And Gators reeling here early in this one. We're on the Gators' side, and it is silent here. Cramp for Scoop Smith. Cam Walter coming over to attend to his number one target, number one, Scoop Smith. And the official is going to stop the clock to allow Scoop to hobble over to the sideline and be attended to by the athletic training staff over there on that far side. That's 63 yards just in touchdown pass yardage from Walter to Smith here alone early in the second quarter of this one. That connection looks like it's just going to get better and better over the next few years. Marazhan for the PAT, booms that one through the upright. And it's 13-0 with just under 11 minutes to play here in quarter number two. And Vince, this is not the way that Gateway wanted this game to begin. No, not, not a chance, Adam. And now you've got to wonder, you know, this, is, this is the exact last situation you wanted to get into with a backup quarterback. 
and an offense that already has had some struggles here in the early part of the season is now you've got to figure out how do you open it up and try to, to get back into this one down two scores here through one quarter and a minute and three seconds and so what will this offense look like for the Gators? Will they try to reestablish a run? Are they going to try and push the ball downfield? Or will they still just try and continue to, to, to dump it off into the flats to their playmakers? And you know, they've had some mixed success there. They've gotten Selby the ball, who's been able to get a burst downfield. But trying to get that ball into Reynolds' hands, it's been really difficult for the Gators both last week and this week. I'm not sure how they're going to change that. Gateway came into this game the number two team in the WPIAL rankings. And uh, you know, you've got to think that if this continues the way they played last week, the way that this game has started, that, that we're not going to see much of that continue. And they got a tough schedule this year, Adam. There's a new coaching staff at, at Norwin. That's a, a team that took Upper St. Clair to the wire last week. We'll see if that program grows. Uh, Hempfield and Plum both bring a ton back from teams that had some success last year. Franklin Regional has Aiden Hudock back and a couple pieces on a team that looks to compete. And Penn Trafford's always solid. So it's gonna be a it's gonna be tough. And, and the Gators themselves, I know it's a late season non-conference game, but they'll have to play Central Catholic too. On the run, Kenny Lewis catches this kickoff and will carry it out towards the 28-yard line. Tackle on the play by Jaden Jones. So, you know, a word that we talk about a lot and a word that I think is such a, a, a big lesson these student athletes learn from sports is resiliency. And for the Gators, it's how much resiliency do you have? You've given up a couple scores, you've fallen behind early. Are you able to, to focus on the next play and sort of put that back in the peripheral? And what can you make happen here? Bryant in the shotgun. I think with uh, Gateway right now, it really needs to just get some quick hitting plays going. Plays that take a long time to develop are not what's going to work with this uh, Woodland Hills defense. As that pass is completed on a quick misdirection, and it's complete to Ahmad Harris, who carries it out across the 30 towards the 33 or 34 yard line. Couldn't agree more, and you see it in practice right there. T think about two of their more productive plays. They got a first down on second and 15 by just getting it to Selby quickly on a quick throw across into the flats, and then a quick one over the top to Kenny Lewis. The play did get called back, but it was a quick throw. It didn't take much time to develop. Jaquan Reynolds trying to bounce it outside right, and the Gators are there to shut that one down. Zykeer Moore, the first one there on the tackle. Moore already having a great game for this one being just a little over a quarter in. And again, Reynolds fighting for every single yard here. And this is a big third and medium here. The Gators desperately need to try and keep this offense on the field, build some continuity and get some points on the board. Two receivers to either side with Bryant in the shotgun. To his right is Reynolds. Snap, fumble, picked up. Bryant running left, tosses. An attempt diving towards it over there on that far side was Selby. And I'm not sure if Bryant would have been well served to try to pick that up with the legs. I didn't see all the pursuit, but there was some greenery in front of him from my vantage point. Well, we'll take another look at it here. And it looked like you had hanging out there around the, the boundary, Andre Smith. You think he might have been able to come up and make a play before Bryant got those legs down. But can't fault him for trying to look downfield and make a play out of the broken play. But that's the second time we've seen a snap go errant. One was snapped erroneously away from Bryant. That time he just bobbles it. Those are the little miscues that you can't afford to have when you're trying to get back into a game here. Marsh, end over end punt. Hops two times on the return. Isaiah Ramsey. Ramsey still on his feet and will be brought down as he gets out towards the 30 yard line. Tell you what, Ramsey was doing everything he could to try to escape gateway tackle. <laughs> yeah, he sure worked for that one. A glutton for punishment, though. Him picking that one up led to him getting hit about three or four times on that one for a pretty minimal gain. And uh, to boot, I think he was down there, but the officials let it play on just so that Mark Knight could come in and wallop him one more time. And so not uh, 
Not bad field position for the Wolverines. If you're the Gators, you're able to flip the field a little bit and push them back a bit further. A lot better than having them start at your 38, that's for sure. So first down and 10 for the Woodland Hills Wolverines with the ball at the 29-yard line. Walter pitch, Jones running left. Jones still running to this near sideline. Hard contact initially by Carlos Diggs, but Jones able to absorb that and pick up a couple more out to the 35. A lot of, a lot of arm tackling and a lot of grasping there, and good job by Jones. A couple of stiff arms early in this one. He's gone to that a couple times here. And Jones, just 5'7", 170 pounds, low center of gravity, using that to his advantage as he's not afraid to sort of run through or run over folks. S.J. Morafield ended up making that tackle for the Gateway Gators. Walter off of play action, tossing it down the near side left. Lots of hand fighting between the DB and the intended receiver. Amir Brown, the intended receiver, the DB, Carlos Diggs. Yeah, good coverage by Diggs, and ultimately that ball underthrown, sort of floated that one, Walter did. And I do think if Brown makes a little bit more aggressive an effort to come back to that ball, he could have probably gotten himself a DPI call there, but Good job not getting overly physical there by the Gators and force a third medium, try to get off the field here. Walter shotgun. Two receivers and a slot on the right. Walter looking right, throwing right, caught Smith. He's got the first down and he will be tossed to the far boundary by Kenny Lewis, but not before getting all the way out to the Woodland Hills 49, and that's more than enough for Woodland Hills first down. You see there, he just has that next level speed. <laughs> Lewis, it's not that he took a bad angle, Scoop Smith is just so ridiculously fast. Hard to keep that guy limited to under 10 yards anytime he touches the ball. Walter will settle in the shotgun, sidecars to either side this time. Andre Smith on his left-hand side, the handoff to Jones. Jones dancing, driving his way forward, and then he'll be knocked down to the turf. Gain of about two inside of gateway territory to the 49. Woodland Hills is, is doing what I think it would have been nice to have seen the Gators try to do early in this game is just stick with the run. There's been a number of plays where Jones and company have only gotten a handful of runs. Elijah Nesby getting held 0, 1, 2 yards. But they stick with it, and they've seen that blow up and give themselves opportunities to get some chunk plays wearing down that interior of the Gators' defense a little bit. On the other side, Gators haven't been able to really establish much with Jaquan Reynolds as we get in. Hit a lot in the backfield, only had one or two real bursts so far in this one. Nesby the tailback this time, next to Walter on the right. And an end around, now a reverse. And a toss to a wide open Scoop Smith, who catches the pass and will carry it all the way for his third touchdown of the game. A little trickery by the Woodland Hills Wolverines. And the Gateway Gators find themselves down by three scores. Brown goes left, or excuse me, Nesby goes left, Brown goes right, settles the ball down in his hands and tosses it to a wide open Scoop Smith, catching it at the 32, and he takes it to the house, able to slide out of the tackle of the Gators' Sean Moorfield Jr. Just no answer there for Smith. <laughs> He's able to go up and get that one and the moment that he catches it he's just so elusive at the Gators unable to bring him down snap a little high but the kick is up and that PAT is good and with 749 to play here in half number one Woodland Hills Wolverines have opened up a 20 to nothing lead on the Gateway Gators And over 112 yards by Scoop Smith just on these three touchdown catches. So he's 
over the century mark with the ball in his hands. My goodness. Tough sledding here for the Gators, and this is not something that we've seen happen to this Gateway team in quite some time to have two weeks in a row where they found themselves down by three scores. Now they got to dig deep without their main signal caller and main linebacker on defense to try to find a way to chip away and get back into this one and play for pride at this point. Play to live up to what has been just such a model program of consistency in 5A. They've got a lot of work ahead of them as everything has gone the Wolverines way thus far in this one. So again, 7.49 to play here in quarter two. 20 to nothing, your score. And Mraz, the kick, end over end, bobbled. And then Kenny Lewis catches it and carries it out across the 30 to around the 34-yard line. Lewis has been a real bright spot when he's caught. Look at that initial return earlier in the contest where he and the other return man, number 21, Terrence Cole, ran into each other. But Lewis, last couple times, he's gotten that ball and been able to get north in a hurry. So we'll see. We're able to get him the ball offensively a little bit more. I mean, they, they were able to connect with him downfield quickly. But unfortunately, that one called back for the illegible man downfield. Ineligible man downfield. I'm sure he could read. So quick issue at the bottom of the screen with our, our score. We'll let you know that we'll have that back up in a second. In the interim, it's first and 10 for the Gators with the ball. At the 34-yard line, a short gain there of about a yard on first down. 7.25 left here in the second quarter. So he's second and nine after the gain of just one. It's Bryant back in the gun once again, waiting for the play from the sidelines. See if they take a shot downfield here or if they keep it on the ground. Nice connection. That's going to be first down yardage and a little bit more there. A nice pitch and catch. Dyson Harper, we've seen his brother excel. Now off to Youngstown State, but unfortunately another flag in the backfield, likely against the Gators. And my goodness, it's the last thing the Gators needed was to see another chunk play come back. Office, number 54. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. Well, Vince, thank you for stepping in there. Got our score bot back up and working. A new scoreboard here at the Wolverina leads to new scoreboard operators, and they moved the scoreboard controller, which unplugged our score bot down at the bottom. It's always something, broadcasting high school sports. Pressure on the quarterback. Bryant, he eludes the pressure, slithers his way forward to the 25. A flag comes in, this may be roughing the quarterback. There was a lot of contact up towards the head of Bryant. Obviously, the referee is going to have to sort this one out, but you know, this, this game offensively has not gone the way the Gators wanted. So an incidental face mask, five yards. Replay the down as the ball pushed out to the 30. But um, like I said, Vince, not only has this not gone the way the Gators wanted offensively, but defensively, they've allowed Scoop Smith to get behind them too many times. Oh my goodness, and he is talented, don't get me wrong, but they've just lost track of him too many times. Bryant toss behind Kenny Lewis. He couldn't pull it in. Coverage on the play by Andre Smith. Got to get that ball a little further out in front there, give Lewis a chance in space. Lewis was wide open. If he is able to catch that one in stride, likely has first down yardage and a little bit more. Good snap. 
Bryant pressured, rolls left, steps up, throws in and out of the hands of Dyson Harper. Harper, I think, was thinking run before he had the ball, and it caroms off his chest to the turf, incomplete, and the punt unit comes back on for Gateway. Just been that kind of night in the early going here for the Gators. And a great job by Bryant. Sid Bryant gets out of the pocket, is able to extend the play, rolls to the side, he's comfortable, that right, right arm, and uncorks a real nice throw right on the numbers there to Harper, who just... Like you said, Adam was thinking about the next step of the process before finishing that catch. So again, it's the punt unit. Lake Marsh to punt it. Wobbly snap this time. Marsh, a low knuckler, takes a bounce and will be returned by Jones. And Jones is wrapped and brought down immediately as the tackle's made by S.J. Morrifield for the Gateway Gators. Say the Wolverines have no qualms about picking that ball up with Gators bearing down on them on this punt return unit. We've seen it a couple different times here. We've seen uh, Scoop Smith, we've seen Amir Brown, we've seen now uh, Jones, the main tailback. But they believe that they've got the athletes, that they don't need a whole lot of space to be able to turn nothing into something. And Scoop Smith has done that single-handedly here in this first half. Hand off, Jones running to the right-hand side where he will be tackled by his number mate, Amari Gans. So number five on the carry, number five on the tackle. You saw Gans trying to punch that ball out. Kenny Lewis coming up and a pop there at the end for good measure for a very minimal gain. A good job there, Gans wrapping up the ball carrier and stymieing progress before Jones could really even get his motor started. See if they can sustain that and see if they can Avoid giving up that big play. Like we said, all these three touchdowns, over 112 yards of yards to the air. It's an average of about 35 per touchdown. Two receivers to either side. Walter has time. Tosses to Scoop Smith. And Scoop Smith showing some strength, not initially brought down by Gans, but cleaning up the play. Kenny Lewis for the Gators. Yeah, I was just about to say the same thing again. Smith. 5'6", 135 pounds he's listed on the roster. And you see there, he's almost able to slip away from Gans, who's 5'11", and has an extra 35 pounds of muscle on Smith. But Smith able to stay up on his feet at least for a second there before a bit of gang tackling by the Gators makes that a minimal gain and a third and very long here. A little bit of confusion by Woodland Hills. Rolling right. Throwing the pass complete to that far side and a Woodland Hills first down. This passing game, very efficient, very effective for Woodland Hills as that pass complete, complete to Amir Brown on the far sideline. They're doing the things that you wish you could see the Gators do. Just well-designed, quick hitters that get your athletes open and in space to give them an opportunity for yards after the catch. And we've seen it a few times tonight for the Gators, but penalties have brought those plays back, unfortunately. And you just hope that they're able to work these kinks out in these non-conference games, week zero, week one, because the talent's clearly there. Just have to work through some of these growing pains of having some turnover on both sides of the ball. The blocking has certainly been a lot better for Woodland Hills than it has been for Gateway, allowing Walter to roll and make things happen, even on those quicker hitters. As this time running to the right-hand side. Not a whole lot of room. I think that was Nesby or No, excuse me, it was George Hill. Hill wears number four, 6'1", junior. Big shoes to fill, wearing number four for the Woodland Hills Wolverines as a running back. Miles Sanders, currently in the black, silver, and turquoise of the Carolina Panthers, wore that number for four seasons here in Turtle Creek. I'll tell you, at 6'1", 225, I'm sure George Hill does wear relatively large shoes. He looked like a handful there to try and bring down on his first carry. Walter, power pistol, play action. Steps left, throws, and that pass is incomplete, leaping up Carlos Diggs with the INT. Hopefully that's the spark the Gators needed to try and get themselves back into this. We 
have yet to see this Gators defense have that big play ability and you know, certainly a big part of that is they lost Dallas Harper last year, who was a turnover juggernaut machine. And they don't have Remy Bowes in the lineup right now, who applied a ton of pressure. Him and Matthew Brooks were always in the backfield, which really sped up that internal clock for quarterbacks and resulted in a lot of turnovers. But there, just great coverage. Walter maybe got a little big for his britches there, trying to go into double coverage with all the success he's had tonight. And Diggs, a good job of going up and getting that one and giving the Gators an extra possession here. Sid Bryant out of the shotgun. Steps left. Flag flies, I do believe. I think I saw something fly up there, but it could have come from an official on the field, or it could have come from a Gateway fan who was in my foreground. So no flag, just an incomplete pass brings up second down and 10. And another ball there that Bryant's going to want to have back if he Pulls that one down just a little bit. He's got Lewis out there toward the first down boundary. So Sid Bryant in the shotgun sidecar to his left wing on the left of the formation as well. Early pressure. Bryant rolls left. Dumps it off. Harper catching it. Out across the 30. And a little... Pushing and shoving after the play ends. Some extra whistles by the officials, but no flags fly as cooler heads prevail. Again, Brian able to make something out of nothing there. And if nothing else, you've got to appreciate he doesn't look overwhelmed out there, Adam. He doesn't look panicked. Rolls out, constantly trying to get his eyes downfield, is able to gain at least a few yards there to make this a third and somewhat medium. But again, for the second straight week, the Gators QB, whether it be Brian or Birch, has had a hard time really getting established in the pocket and on the move. Setting up the screen. This time complete to Selby. Selby, eluding tacklers. Gateway first down, out across the 40, and forced out of bounds at around the 42. 236 stops the clock, which is good for the Gators so that they don't feel too, too rushed offensively. But more than anything, this offense can exhale at least for a second. Get that first down, move the chains. It feels like it's been a while since they've been able to do that. As it looks like there's a Wolverine down with some cramping. Gives the Gators a chance for an impromptu timeout with 2.36 left. But if nothing else, if the Gators can at least just possess this ball, put together some longer drives, and have the opportunity to build some momentum. That feels worth its weight in gold with how tough things have been for the black and gold thus far this season. So earlier we talked about uh, some of the rankings as the Gateway Gators had slipped from number one to number two. As we take a look at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette top five. So Gateway slipped to number two in the Trib, but number three in the PG, Penn Hills, Undefeated 1-0, number one, Peters Township 1-0. They're a solid team from what I understand. Gateway number three, Pine Ridgeland with a loss last week is number four, Bethel Park rounding out the top five. And one thing that you notice in that ranking, you don't see more than one team out of the Gators Conference. Yeah, same goes for the Trib High School Sports Network rankings as well. Gators still slotted in at number two there with, you know, the same five teams just in a different order. And you have to think the Gators, if they're, unless they're able to really make some hay here at the end of this first half and the second half, those rankings are going to look a lot different for them next week. Bryant with some time as he rolls to his right, tosses, and this one will be intercepted, sagging underneath Amari Gams with the INT. Excuse me, that was uh, Brandon Jones with the interception, racing far sideline. There's a flag down back at around the 32-yard line. And the Gateway fans down below us are certainly adamant that this one may be negated. There's also a flag back near the line of scrimmage, Vince. Well, Adam, at least down here right in front of us on the defensive side of the ball, there's going to be two separate penalties on Nico Andrews. A block at the back initially after the interception, and then coming back, Dyson Harper was trying to get back into the play to make a tackle, and then Andrews 
threw him to the turf again and then got on top of him and threw him down again. So even if it doesn't negate the interception, it certainly will negate the return as we take another look at this one. The pass intended for Harper shorted the INT by Jones. And initially, uh, there was a uh, defensive back, Nico Andrews, that you mentioned draped on top of Harper. So while the pass was short, that still could be pass interference. We're going to have to iron this out because there are flags everywhere, quite literally. Two down in the defensive secondary, two near the line of scrimmage. Force caller, defense, 15 yards from the previous spot. That penalty will be accepted and will be a first down. Pass interference, defense, that penalty is declined. So as we take another look at this one, Vince, apparently the horse collar happened as flushing to this left-hand side. Yep, back of the jersey grabbed right around that nameplate. And that horse collar negates the INT. So either way, that INT was going to be negated, whether it was the DPI or there the horse collar. That puts the Gators in great field position. Can they make something of it and try to go into the half with a little momentum and pull this within a two-score game? Bryant settling, pressured, complete to Reynolds on the screen. He's got nowhere to go except to the line of scrimmage. The screens are, are very difficult to set up against the defense with the speed like Woodland Hills has because you've got to hold for two seconds, and if you don't hold up that rush, your quarterback's going to get killed. Yeah. And if it's slow to develop the other way, the Woodland Hills defenders are going to be able to sack back and very quickly get over and make the play on the receiver. And so far we've seen both happen tonight. It's been tough sledding. Still think if they can try and find some quick hitters here on the outside to Selby or to Lewis, that's where they've been at their best. They just got to keep from having guys getting downfield. That ineligible man downfield has been a killer a couple times for the Gators, but they've had some flashes there, even with Bryant back there at quarterback, that if they're able to get a quick three-step drop and then throw out within two seconds, they've been able to have some success in that arena. So Vince, we looked forward for the Gateway Gators. We talked about what's coming up next, next week against North Hills, and the following week against Franklin Regional. But then the Gators are going to go on the road against a Plum Mustang team who's got so much to play for this year. So much to play for, sure, a community that, that is you know reeling and, and dealing with tragedy. But a, a talented team that brings back nine starters from last season, including Odom at running back, who shined again for a second straight year against Kiske in the opener to start out 1-0 and on the season. And so that's that's the team I look at that I think people are sleeping on a little bit that could be a real sleeper team in 5A to get into the postseason. Whether or not they really make some hay from there, who knows. But Hemfield brings some stuff back as well. Penn Trafford is, is going to be talented. And then late in the season, you know, the Gators had two tough non-conference opponents in McKeesport and Central Catholic. And we saw the Gators have a real hard time with both of them last year. And both of those teams bring back a great deal of talent. I really do like how that schedule is laid out with two of your last three games being non-conference games and a very inconsequential game at the end of the season in a uh, interclassification matchup as this pass tossed to the right hand side complete to Kenny Lewis. Kenny Lewis was out near the first down flag to be a gain of about nine and then they'll push the ball back to the 35 so a gain of eight ultimately. And there it is a quick pitch and catch. If the Gators can try and do a little bit more of that, take what the defense gives you, move this ball. Third down and two becomes fourth down and about four as Jaquan Reynolds is met in the backfield and brought down by Charles Harper. So now it's decision time, and they're going to keep that offense out on the field. I don't mind this call whatsoever. you got to try and push here to get something before the end of the half. Get yourself within striking distance over the final 24 minutes. Bryant with time, rolling right, throwing, and that pass is incomplete. Intended for Dyson Harper on the coverage for Woodland Hills is Nico Andros, and turnover on downs gives the ball to the Wolverines at the 37-yard line. The Wolverines have some time to work with here, 35 seconds and two timeouts. And with <laughs> Scoop Smith, that might be all you need. We'll see if they dial him up and try and at least take one shot over the top. 
before we get to the break in this one. But what uncharted territory for the Gators through these first two games. Usually the ones that are on the other side of these, these numbers here. And certainly you're without a couple real key pieces of your team with Brad Birch and Remy Bowes not suiting up tonight. It'll be very interesting to see what the second half looks like for these Gators. Woodland Hill's going to go under center. And the Wolverines will be very happy to take a 20-0 lead into the locker room. Boys. Yeah, I don't think anyone saw this score coming out of the first half of this game. You know, certainly last week, the Gators didn't look incredibly sharp against Mount Lebanon. But it's Mount Lebanon. It's a 6A school. There's a lot of size, a lot of talent. You got Connor Young was able to disrupt things on defense. He's going to be going and playing at a, at a high-level institution at D1. And here you have a couple athletes on the offensive side, but Woodland Hills did not look like world beaters against Central Catholic. They did not look very sharp last week themselves. But credit to that coaching staff. They've got this team ready to play tonight, and they came and took it to the Gators here in the first half. They sure did, and how about that passing game by the Woodland Hills Wolverines? Walter to Smith is a legitimate connection and a connection that's going to be happening happening for three more seasons. My goodness, yeah, and the rest of the Northeast Conference has got to be taking notice of that, whether you're Penn Hills or Pine Richland, two of those teams that are always uh, sort of fighting tooth and nail to be the top team to come out of this conference. Keep an eye on these Wolverines. They've got some size inside, and tonight they've been able to move bodies around, create space, and Walter hasn't faced a whole lot of pressure tonight. He's had time to throw. Because of that, he has three passing touchdowns. Did throw that interception toward the end of the first half, but has looked pretty crisp throughout most of this game. We're going to step away here at halftime, enjoy the marching bands from Woodland Hills and Gateway, and we'll get you set for the second half just before that second half kickoff. For Vince Russo, I'm Adam Guske. You're tuned in to GatewayGatorProductions.com. Set to begin half number two here in Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania. Adam Guske, Vince Russo on the call for you here at the Wolverina. High above George A. Novak Field. It's good to have you along with us this evening here on GatewayGatorProductions.com. And Vince, as we take a look in the rearview mirror for that first half for the Gateway Gators, offense only had a couple of opportunities to get something done. And defensively, big plays were the name of the game allowed by that Gateway defense and made by that Woodland Hills offense. And a big part of that we talked about, Adam, that first half is the Wolverines passing game did look incredibly crisp. They executed at a high level on what they were trying to do and getting guys in space. and. Scoop Smith is just so incredibly talented, and, and the Gators can't let him get behind the last resort of their defense with free safety. He did twice, and then another time was able to just catch one in space. Razzle-dazzle play, makes a few guys miss, and showed some strength as well. Hard to bring down, and you know that guy has over 112 yards just in touchdown catches in the first half, and that's you know four, four touchdowns in six quarters of play to start the year. He's someone to keep an eye on for a player of the year in 5A. Vince, as we take a look at the Gateway offense, something that Gateway is going to need to do is figure out how to put some offense together. They've tried running the ball with uh, Reynolds. They've tried throwing him the ball on some screens, and that hasn't worked very well. I think one thing that the Gators need to do is continue to have uh, Bryant roll out quick passes to some of those receivers who find themselves open quickly in the uh, Woodland Hill zone. Yeah, the rollout was really working well. Bryant moves well and throws the ball pretty well on the run, but he has to have enough time and there have to be plays designed with guys coming across the field that he can put that ball on the numbers and get them in space. We saw that just a few times, uh, but a couple times brought back by penalties, unfortunately. And you start to get really concerned about this Gators offense. Six quarters of play, just one touchdown, and that came in sort of garbage time situation against Mount Lebanon where they were playing prevent defense and the Gators were able to sort of dink and dunk and then Brad Burch was able to run up the gut for about five, six yards for a touchdown. Bad news for the Gateway Gators. They don't even get the ball to begin the second half. They give it back to Woodland Hills to start half number two, and a very talented Woodland Hills offense will take the field again. We'll see if there's a different result. Speaking of results, always love to key in folks on what's happening around the league. Plum currently leads Fox Chapel. McKee Sports all over Penn Trafford. Uh, Norwin losing to Penn Hills. Those are just a few scores from your out-of-town scoreboard for the Big East teams. Half number two underway here in Turtle Creek, PA. Back to the 10-yard line. Scoop Smith on the return for the Woodland Hills Wolverines. Running to the near side left. He'll trot to the boundary, step out of bounds at the 34-yard line. And with that diminutive 5'6", 135-pound stature, I think that is a smart play. Uh, preservation as well. You're up three scores and got a chance. You'd already gotten to the edge and gotten some decent field position. Wolverines will start it 
at 34 yard line. So no sense in trying to push the envelope when everything's been sort of going your way in this contest thus far, especially for number one. Number one will split slot to the right. Walter in the pistol with Jones behind him. Hand off Jones, met hard by Amari Gans, and then the play cleaned up by the defensive lineman for the Gateway Gators, Jacob Santo. And a good job there, wrapping up the ball carrier low, and a good job hanging on there by Amari Gans. Make sure that Jones had nothing to work with there. Nice loss of a yard there, push him back, try and keep them off schedule, not give them anything easy. And for the Gators, it's about just making sure you don't give up those big chunk plays. Like we said, all three of those touchdowns came from at least 28 yards out. So it's been the big play that's really hurt them. Shotgun this time for Woody High on second down and 11. Walter, pressure. Rolls left, settles his feet, completes it to Jones. Jones off to the races, down the near boundary, finally pulled out of bounds by J. Rare Phillips. T.J. Mitchell was with Jones, and you'll see on this play, he just makes the decision to try and go for the quarterbacks. It looked like Walter was going to run, and that opens up Jones back behind the defense there. And all of a sudden, he's off to the races with only one man to beat, and a good job getting through that stiff arm. It's Jair Phillips making sure to make that tackle to save the touchdown, but that flips the field quickly for the Wolverines, and suddenly we're inside their own 35. Now they're inside the 35 of the Gators. First and 10. And a flag, or excuse me, a whistle coming from the far side. An official's timeout as a Gator goes down with a cramp. That's Kenny Lewis who gets cramped up back in the secondary for the Gateway Gators. Still hot down on the field with all those pads on, but I tell you what, Adam, it's really cold off here and even have a little crispness in the, crispness in the air compared to what it felt like when we were lugging the equipment in at around 4 o'clock today. Uh, Christmas, not quite yet. Christmas, uh, yeah. yes, I would concur with that. Speaking of Christmas, coming up this winter, we will have coverage of Gateway Gators basketball, boys and girls, as well as wrestling, to go along with some swimming as well. But, of course, our upcoming broadcasts are as follows. Girls soccer against Franklin Regional on September 6th, and the Gators football team hosts North Hills for their first home game of the season on September 8th. It'll be girls volleyball. We'll be heading to the gym for the first time as the Gators girls volleyball team takes on Penn Hills. And then there's the big game against Franklin Regional, a rematch of a game that led to a shared conference title last year in the Big East Conference. Then we've got girls soccer against Greensburg-Salem. Football game on the road at Plum. Then at home, girls volleyball against the Woodland Hills Wolverines and then wrapping up the month against the Hemfield Spartans, a team that certainly got revenge on their mind football-wise after uh, the Gateway Gators went to Greensburg last year and definitely put a big damper on their big 50th anniversary homecoming. Well, not to mention that Hemfield team was unblemished at the time of that game, and it was billed as really the huge litmus test and whether or not that they really were legitimate last year, and that really kind of put the knife in their season. They were 5-0, and and then the Gators went in and dropped 56 on them and kind of put that to bed pretty quickly. Vince, we talked about it earlier, Gateway, the only ranked team currently in the Big East Conference, number three in the PG, number two in the Trib Live High School Sports Network rankings. Hemfield is 1-0, and as are the Plum Mustangs, and every other team in the conference lost a week ago. Franklin Regional, Norwin, Penn Trapp, and of course, Gateway with a loss on the road against Mount Lebanon. And it might be a tough year for this conference. Most of, of those teams are losing here in the non-conference tonight. Talked about Norwin trailing Penn Hills, Penn Trafford losing 17-0 to McKeesport. Uh, Franklin Regional was down 21-14 to Greater Latrobe as well. So tough sledding in the early going for the Big East. Back to live action. Walter screen to the near side left. Pass complete 
to Nico Andrews, who tries to dance his way forward. Only gets to the line of scrimmage, no further, bringing up second down and 10. Yeah, good coverage there. Good job breaking down, gang tackling for the Gators. Again, they've, they've done well, nine out of 10 plays, but it's these big chunk plays that have absolutely killed them. And that long completion to Jones set them up with really great field position. But if the Gators can hold here for a couple more plays, you think this is probably four down territory. You got yourself a chance to try and get the ball back. Start putting it the other way offensively, build something here. Walter in the pistol, straight drop back, pressured, rolling right, eludes the pressure. The second wave he's not able to get out of as Jacob Santo leads the charge on the QB sack. You're starting to see a little bit more pressure here from this defensive line, and you're, you're seeing in that second quarter the Wolverines were able to run the ball pretty effectively, at least to maintain drives and get small chunks of yards, three, four at a time, and tough sledding here on this drive. Other than that long completion to Jones, they've gotten into the backfield, and Santos himself there has gotten close a few times. That time, able to wallop the quarterback, Walter. That's the first sack we've seen tonight for the Gators, and that one makes it third and very, very long, which is fortunate for the Gators. Gives them an opportunity to hopefully get the punt team out there, get the ball back. Cam Walter in the shotgun. Sidecar to his left-hand side. Here's Elijah Nesby. Play action. Setting up the screen. Nesby bobbles it two times, and a near interception there by T.J. Mitchell. He had an opportunity to try to pick that one off, but he was very focused on tackling Nesby at the same time. Regardless, that'll bring out the punt unit for the Woodland Hills Wolverines. Yeah, and regardless, a good play. Made sure that no matter what, even if that was miraculously caught by the back, that he's laying the boom and making sure that the ball carrier is not moving forward in any meaningful way. So Kenny Lewis is back deep to return for the Gateway Gators and punting for the host Wolverines, Jacob Braz. 5'9", sophomore, second year as the kicking specialist for the Woodland Hills Wolverines. He'll step into this one, and it's a beauty. Hops in favor of Woodland Hills to the boundary and will be kept in bounds at the 11-yard line down there. And a long field to work with for the Gateway Gators. See what kind of adjustments they made from a, an offensive play calling standpoint. They went heavily with the screens. And you know, you and I talked about it a little bit off air, Adam, and how hard it is against an athletic defense like Woodland Hills to effectively set up the screen. Got to stay there and set up enough time to give your quarterback the time not to get demolished, but get the ball out. But then once they've gotten the ball out, that, that defense and the athleticism of the Wolverines, they've been able to flock to the ball and recover so quickly and so effectively that it's really nullified a play that the Gators really like to run. Gaping hole, and Jaquan Reynolds carries it out across the 20. Hit hard, but he is knocked down to the turf and down to the 21-yard line. A gain of 10. It looked like it could have been for a lot more, but that Woodland Hills defense swarms and makes the play. Yeah, so athletic. And we saw there on the offensive side of the ball, George Hill in the first half got a carry and was able to use that 6'1", 225 frame to drag a few guys. And that time, he's laying the boom on the defensive side of the ball with that big frame. Again, Jaquan Reynolds on the carry. Up the gut, picks up a couple. He'll be undercut and brought down by Zakir Moore. Bryant rolls to his left. Settles the feet and throws. A high pass will be caught by Jaquan Reynolds. He's still on his feet, spinning his way inside of the 40 to the 36-yard line. And it's going to be coming back again, though, Adam. Looks like another penalty on the offense. And again, these have just been absolute gut punches. I don't know what it is about the lineman here, although there was a hit there low on the quarterback toward the end. I don't know if they would potentially call a defensive penalty. That's not going to be the case, it looks like. Yeah, as I took a look at the replay, you could see Jacob Santo downfield as he was uh, rolling to his left-hand side trying to protect his junior quarterback, Sid Bryant. And that negates a big play, and it's a real shame for the Gateway Gators. They have had several decent plays tonight negated by penalty. 
And Kenny Lewis locked up again in a cramp as he was heading back to the gateway line of scrimmage, and he is uh, very upset with his uh, legs not cooperating with him this evening. Lewis is a guy who plays on all three facets. Uh, he's the return man. He's a DB on the defensive side of the ball, and he's been one of the top targeted receivers for the Gators thus far this season. So he doesn't really spend a whole lot of time on the sidelines, and that's going to be difficult to try and maintain that stamina the whole way through, and it's been this hot early in the season. Time to take a look at what's ahead for the Woodland Hills Wolverines. Take on the Penn Trafford Warriors next week. Three straight home games. I misspoke earlier. I forgot I spoke with uh, the athletic department here at Woodland Hills, and they said they felt pretty blessed to have three straight home games to begin the season this year as they tune up things here at George A. Novak Field at the Wolverine. Finally, we'll hit the road at North Hills in week four, a conference game there before they take on the Norwin Knights, stepping out of conference, and then it'll be the Shaler Titans in conference, then at the Highland Rams, a team out of 4A, and then they wrap up the season the way I like it with three straight conference games. And those last two are really the ones that you want to keep an eye on, Pine Richland and Penn Hills. Those, these three teams sort of fought for those final two spots to get into the postseason. And we saw controversially last season that Penn Hills left out of the tournament. They were leading the conference going into the last game, lost the last game of the regular season. And that ended up taking them from the top of the conference to out of the playoffs entirely due to tiebreakers. And so all of those games mean so, so much, especially those two at the end of the season. Don't forget to check out gatewaygatorproductions.com for each of our games of the week to go along with our gateway football game that we have for you each and every Friday night through the late summer and fall here in southwestern Pennsylvania. You brought that graphic up. This is going to be a busy team over the next month. There's a lot going on. Of course, Spencer Witt will be joining us for a lot of our Gateway Games of the Week. I'll also be sitting in with you on a football game or two as the season progresses. As Brian is pressured, rolling right, and the pass is incomplete on this near side right. Intended for Ahmad Harris. And as the pass hits the turf, that brings up third down and 15. You talk about it really is a shame. You, you saw a beautiful completion. Jaquan Reynolds down the field, excitement. Think about, can this team get in a, within a couple scores early in the third? Now you're at third and 15 deep in your territory. Those man downfield penalties have just been absolute killers for the Gators tonight. Off of play action, Bryant throwing to his right, caught by Harper. Harper out near the 30. They'll say he's down at around the 28-yard line. Dyson Harper, the junior, with that reception, but not enough for the first down, and the punt unit comes on for the Gateway Gators. And those are the completions they need on first and second down, so that if they go to that sort of play on a third down, that it's going to be more than enough. But third and 15, the crawl route there is not going to get not going to get you where you need to go, unfortunately. It does, however, give your punter a little more room to work with here in his own territory. Whistles blow and the timeout taken by the Woodland Hills Wolverines. It's the first charge timeout of the second half. The scoreboard operators did not update that part of the scoreboard. And Vince, we already touched on this once, but a brand new video board here at the Wolverina. Um, so they're able to do much like we have at Gateway, a live video stream, not just for their fans, but as well as on uh, the new video board here at uh, the Wolverine here at George A. Novak Field, and that's the Woodland Hills broadcast you see there. On the Wolvatron 9000, is that what they call it? I didn't quite catch the, the full name of it, but whatever it may be, the brand new video board here in Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania, part of the game day experience for the Woodland Hills Wolverines, but of course, we're more concerned about the game day experience for the Gateway Gators. And their fans, right now, got to be a bit frustrating for their fans taking a look at a 20 to nothing deficit against the Woodland Hills Wolverines. And unless things change pretty quickly, the Gators starting their season 0 and 2. Marsh, snap, slides through his hands, and he'll be wrapped and brought down 
back at the 10 yard line. And Lanier Butler, who has made a handful of big plays defensively for the Woodland Hills Wolverines, makes a huge one there on special teams. Yeah, that's going to set up the Wolverines with basically a goal to go situation here on offense for Cracks to get it in from 10 yards out. And you know, we just got done talking about how it's been a bit of a tough night for the Gator faithful. And it's just hard to find too many things to really hang your hat on or feel good about in these first couple weeks of the season. And you wonder sort of where things go. You wonder if you'll get Bows or Birch back for next week or in the foreseeable future. And you start to really feel some growing concern for this season overall. Broken play here, and Walter is walloped and brought down straight up the gut. Comes Ahmad Harris to get the sack. Well, I will say that is, is timely. We have seen some sparks from this defense throughout this contest. Yes, they've gotten burned on some big plays. They're going to have to sure things up in the secondary, but very encouraging to see in the second half they're getting some more pressure on the quarterback. A couple sacks here, which uh, I don't believe they had any sacks last week against Mount Lebanon. And so the first couple here on the season, and the offensive line, I think, has taken a bit of a step forward tonight. Uh, still haven't been able to, to, to run the ball super effectively, but they've given enough time for the quarterback to roll out of the pocket and have a little bit of time to look downfield. And so some small, small victories there, but certainly not the ones that translate to the scoreboard, the ones that make the Gator fans feel all that good. Walter hands off Jones. And again, it's Jones number five, tackled by Amari Gans number five. Interesting story about number five versus number five and Woodland Hills and Gateway players on the far sideline on the Woodland Hills coaching staff. Young man named Cam Sadler who played at Gateway went to Pitt or number five. Woodland Hills had a young man named Juan Price who went to Pitt or number five. One offense, one defense. Unfortunately, one time Juan Price ran on to try to help out the punt unit that was a man short while Cam Sadler was back to return a punt, and Pitt was charged with a penalty for having two number fives on the field. Now that happens in college. You find they have just about everyone double numbered in college. That can get confusing pretty quick. Walter flushed, steps up, tosses right, the pass complete. It's Brandon Jones trying to wiggle his way for some positive yardage, and will do so down to the 15 before he's brought down by Santo, also in on the stop mark night. Walter showing a little bit of some footwork there to evade a few folks in the pocket, and then is just able to sort of flip that one out to Jones, and Jones makes the first man miss, if even for a moment, before Knight sort of gathers up and gets him from behind. And so now the field goal unit will come on, an opportunity to tack onto this lead. About 32 yards. Miles out of the hold of, I believe, Smith. And that field goal is blocked. And Scoop Smith pats it down the turf. It's still loose. Woodland, or rather, Gateway trying to scoop it up. Instead, they'll finally fall on the football. But all that batting around ended up working in Gateway's favor because that ball's pushed all the way out to the 37-yard line. So decent field position for this possession to start for the Gateway Gators. Yeah, you think of Scoop picks that up he might have a chance to you never know what he's going to be able to do when he has the ball in his hands but then you see Derek Selby sort of kicking himself because he's pretty good with the ball in his hands as well so if he was able to sort of scoop that one up you never know if he'd be able to sort of get himself up and off to the races and if you're the Gators you'll take points any which way you can get them but you'll also settle for decent field position and not conceding any more points after the Wolverine started with first and 10 at the 10 yard line. Gators offense on the field. Sid Bryant, first start at QB for the Gateway Gators. Off the play action, he'll look left the whole way, throwing left, and that pass intended for Kenny Lewis is incomplete. You could see Lewis as he tried to break towards that far sideline. His leg started to lock up just a bit again. Now it looks like he's going to be able to stay in at least for the moment, but uh, he, he's certainly having some issues with cramping in those legs. Yeah, and he's one that they really need out there on, like we said, all all three facets of the game, who's such a difference maker. Bobbled snap of the handoff to Reynolds, and Reynolds is able to drive his way out across the 45 to the 46 yard line. Great pursuit from behind by one of the Woodland Hills defensive linemen. And again, that is the 
Lanair Butler, who has made big plays all night for the Woodland Hills D. Jaquan Reynolds trying to drive the pile back. We'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no further, bringing up second down and 10. And you talk about that last play, Butler really making a name for himself here as a junior defensive lineman, really playing well. Bryant, plenty of time on the play clock. Play action, tosses, Harper catching. Harper trying to break loose. Wolverines pulling at the football, but Harper hangs on to it and carries it inside of the 40 to the 37 for a gateway first down. Yeah, that second effort moved the chains. Nice comeback route, nice timing. Ball a little bit high, but Harper, a good job. They're punching, pulling, trying to get that ball out. He takes on three, four defenders there at the end and is able to pull the pile forward. You talk about a guy in Harper, six foot, 175 pounds. He carries himself kind of lanky. Arms aren't super huge, you see down there, but great job using that momentum to drag guys along with them. And the Gators moving the ball here a little bit, try to build some momentum. If you can get yourself a score here, go into the fourth quarter down a few scores, you start to try and rally the troops a little bit and see if you can't get a turnover like earlier. See what happens. Take a look at the Gators Conference and the Wolverines Conference, but let's take a look at the third conference in WPIL 5A action. Mostly the South Hills and uh, one team out of the West Hills in the Moon Tigers with Baldwin, Bethel Park, a ranked team, Peters Township, a ranked team, South Fayette, Upper St. Clair, and as I said, the Moon Tigers. Yeah, Bethel Park, a team that had turnover at coach as well, had a, a good team, was the number one seed going into 5A last year. They put the hurt on North Hills last week, and at the half they were leading Mount Lebanon 7 6. So that's a Blackhawks team that might ha have something there under a new coach. Hand off Reynolds. No, that's not Reynolds. That is Amari Gans running right, driving his way forward all the way down to the 20 yard line. And the reserve tailback showing a flash. Sure did. I mean, absolutely good shiftiness there. Able to get a nice hole and got some speed on the outside. Makes a man miss. It's a nice run. He'll get the ball again here. Gans trying to run right this time to no avail as the tackle is made by Zykeer Moore. The linebacker. Yeah, more knifed in there. Completely unblocked and just had a free hit there on the ball carrier, Gans. Bryant, shotgun on second and 12. Send up the screen, complete to Gans. Gans trying to bounce it left. Great pursuit by that Woodland Hills defense as Gans gets flushed to the far sideline. Tackle made by Prince Tarrant. Parent, also another Wolverine involved in the tackle. And we've got Gators and Wolverines down. For the Gators, it's Kyan Mbandi, the six foot two, 250 pound sophomore lineman. And again, you hope that's just cramping there. Let's take a look at him there up on the top end of the screen. And yeah, no contact. So you hope that's just some cramping there. That they're able to get him stretched out, hopefully back into the play here before too, too long. Yeah, the Gateway Athletic trainer got out there and went straight to stretch and, and bandy out, and that is very good news for the Gateway player over there, the sophomore offensive lineman. And the Wolverine, like I said, also getting stretched out on that far sideline is Prince Tarrant Jr., 5'9", sophomore defensive back for the Wolverines. Theme for the Gateway students tonight, the blackout on the road against the Woodland Hills Wolverines. Nice showing by the Gateway student section. Of course, they didn't have far to go. We talked about that in the first half, Vince. Just a short trip down the road here along uh, Monroeville Boulevard that becomes Lynn Avenue as it heads into Turtle Creek. Credit to uh, the Gators student section there last week. We talked about them filling up the first bus and the school needing to get a second bus to Ship the students on out to Mount Lebanon. So they had a good showing last week despite the loss and have remained faithful here from week zero to week one. The Gators trying to put together a drive here to reward them, give them something to, to really get excited about and hopefully create some excitement here heading into this final quarter. Good news for Gateway as Kyan Mbandi is to his feet. Now actually jog over to the sidelines. So that's great news 
for the young sophomore lineman for the Gateway Gators. So he'll have to miss a play, as will Tarrant over there on the far side for the Woodland Hills Wolverines. Gateway now facing this third down and a dozen. And Adam, you have to think this is, for the Gators, four down territory. So you don't necessarily need a play that's going to get you 12 yards. But you do need something that's going to put you in a position to have a fourth and short if you don't get all of it. To the ground to Reynolds. Reynolds up the middle. He'll just pick up two, making it fourth down and ten. We'll actually just move the ball inside of the 21, so a gain of about one and a half brings up fourth and about ten and a half. They've had some success on this drive running the ball. I don't blame them. That's going to make it tough here on fourth down. Bryant looking left the whole way, throwing left. One on one coverage, and it is incomplete in the arms of Derek Selby, but he couldn't hang on as in his jersey was Nico Andrews. And that could have just as easily been DPI as it was just an incomplete pass. Yeah, that's that's a real tough call there. We'll take another look at it at the top of your screen. Selby was beside himself that he didn't get that call. Now the Gators defense has to go back out there and figure out how to get another stop here. That's a tough break for the Gators. And Selby had a chance at it with the one hand, but just couldn't trap that against his leg. So another turnover on downs for the Gateway offense gives the Woodland Hills offense the football first down and 10 at the 21. Two minutes to go here in quarter number three. Cam Walter in the shotgun. Play action, rolling left, pressured. Retreating, tripped up but keeps his footing. Now deflected as he throws it to the near sideline. Was there a Wolverine close enough? It doesn't matter because they say the pass was tipped. And Mark Knight is slow to get to his feet as he's being tended to initially by Scoop Smith from Woodland Hills. He was uh, flagging the athletic training staff to come out there and take a look at Mark Knight and Looks like it's just a cramp, which is great news again because you hate to see any player go down. But early in the season, you know, at least you can have a gauge of likely it's just a cramp. Yeah. Yeah, not, not uncommon with just how incredibly warm it's been these first two weeks. Like we said, luckily not as humid as it was last week. My goodness. But, again, a lot of these guys play in both ways, playing special teams here and there. And this defense has been uh, – been tasked with being on the field a good bit tonight with the Gators unable to sustain a ton of drives offensively. And to their credit, the defenses uh, held them within a respectable distance in this game. And Mark Knight's been a big part of that. We've talked about him being all over the field. We've talked about him chasing guys down and disrupting plays. And you know, that uh, even at 18, uh, you know, 15 to 18 years old, your body still catches up with you after doing that for quite some time as we get uh, into the later goings in this one. Well, what happens when you approach 30 or approach 45? Well, I got another year before I figure most of that out, so uh, we'll see, we'll see. Both teams uh, have an opportunity here to talk defensive strategy for the Gators and offensive strategy for the Wolverines as Mark Knight still tended to by the athletic training staff down to our low right-hand side. Again, looking forward for this Gateway GatorProductions.com. We'll be able to see girls soccer on Wednesday night before football against North Hills at Pete Anna Marino Stadium. Then our first jaunt to the gym for girls volleyball on September 14th. That's a Thursday night before the Gateway Gators football team takes on Franklin Regional. And then a couple of weeks hence, girls soccer against Greensburg Salem. Vince, you see the girls' volleyball team and that the first girls' volleyball game of the season that we'll be broadcasting. And well, I'll tell you, talking about volleyball in the Pittsburgh area, the Pitt Panthers a volleyball team, of course, a fantastic program. Louisville, 
in the ACC, a terrific program. And all of a sudden, the ACC has now added Stanford, another terrific volleyball program. Boy, what about what we saw just the other night in Nebraska? Oh, wow. 92,000 coming out to support another school that has a program that's been it's been a hard time for the Huskers in football. I don't know if you saw the game last night. They lost in about as current Nebraska Huskers fashion as you could to Minnesota, but the, the volleyball program has been a, a staple at that school of consistency and excellence. That is for sure. Still being tended to Mark Knight down to our right-hand side. It's a shame to see him have such trouble getting rid of these cramps down here on the field to our right-hand side. Some out-of-town scores just trying to scroll through here while we have a moment. It's like Franklin Regional has come from two touch or scored two touchdowns, go from a touchdown down to a touchdown up, 28-21 over Latrobe. And finally, Mark Knight is to his feet and will hobble to the sideline. And will be helped off. And we will resume play here momentarily. And like I said, this certainly gave both of these staffs a huge opportunity to talk strategy. This game has been uh, been taking its time. We're, we're a little past 9 o'clock. Wow. We haven't started the fourth quarter yet. So we've got strapped in. We've got still a good bit of ways to go here in this one. Walter Pistol, the back behind him moves early. Offensive line thinks that uh, Gateway breached the neutral zone, but Six is moving in. We certainly saw Elijah Nesby, the tailback, moving forward first. Now, the umpire went in, moved the ball forward. Neutral zone infraction. Oh, my Defense. goodness. I don't think Defense I agree like with that end. call whatsoever. As a defensive lineman, you are trained to, to, to go on movement and clearly in your peripheral vision or forward vision, as it were, you see the tailback, Elijah Nesby, start to come forward and, and they say neutral zone infraction instead against the Gators. Yeah, they, they even played it again on the on the Volvatron 9000 as well and it showed clearly Nesby moved a little bit, but he'll get big time carry here, my goodness. Yeah, carrying it to the left-hand side, sliding through tackles, dancing his way forward, and finally is brought down by Ahmad Harris. There's a flag way back at the line of scrimmage, and this play negated. And we've seen this from both teams tonight. Yeah, I mean, the Wolverines. Offense number seven. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. We play second down. Certainly uh, have had their fair share of big plays that resulted in points as they have those three touchdowns to... Walter, to, or not all from Walter to Scoop Smith, but three touchdowns for Scoop Smith nonetheless. And uh, but, but both teams have certainly seen penalties be a big factor in this game tonight, and one that's really negated a lot of offense in this game on both sides of the ball. Another score update of substance to this crowd. Penn Hills up now 21-0 on Norwin. Norwin out of the Big East. And of course, Penn Hills out of the Northeast is running down that far sideline. The big gainer is Elijah Nesby, and he'll take it all the way to the house for a Woodland Hills touchdown. My goodness gracious, another huge offensive play for the Woodland Hills Wolverines, this time on the ground. That's certainly the longest of the night, but you're right, all four of these touchdowns now from 28 yards are out. That's the first time we've seen them do it on the ground and credit to the Wolverines. They have stuck with that run game and finally the levy broke there and that second effort by Nesby, it looked like the play had sort of stopped and all of a sudden he sort of just poked out from among the crowd and he was off to the races and no one was going to catch him at that point. Jacob Mraz on to attempt the PAT. That PAT is up and in, and it's 27 to 0. Woodland Hills on top of Gateway. 
124 to play in the third quarter. And a few Gateway fans are starting to make their way to the exits. This has to be just such unfamiliar territory for this fan base and everything you've seen. Two touchdown or two two championships in the last 10 years, 17 and 19, and even over the past three years, teams that had supreme talent and were almost always the more talented team on any given day. A semifinal appearance three years ago. Over the past couple years, early playoff exits, but against talented teams. No shortage of talent that's gone on to play at the next level. And this coaching staff led by Don Hall has its work cut out for it. A couple injuries of substance, both at quarterback and at linebacker. Still a lot of talent on this team. It just looks like not firing on all cylinders. A little disjointed here to start the year. Yeah, we didn't get any definitive answer as to why Birch is not playing this evening, but last week we got word as to why we did not see Remy Bowes, and we do not see him this week and may not see him for a while. A, a hamstring that uh, was severely injured during camp, and uh, he is out for at least a week or so more, if not maybe even longer. It, it, it's a tough injury that Remy Bowes is facing. The 6'2", 220-pound linebacker. And they can linger and linger, and just when you feel like you're getting better, you can experience setbacks with those kind of injuries really quickly. High hanging end over end kick will take one bounce and will be returned by Terrence Cole, the reserve running back who has shown flashes on the return game. And here comes Cole down the near side, sidestepping the kicker all the way to the near boundary and forced out of bounds at the 40 yard line as a late flag comes in. We'll see who that goes against, but normally more often than not, those go against the returning team. And it looks like this one is going to be a hold against the Gators. And Again, a penalty negating to some respect what was an incredible play by the return man, Terrence Cole. Well, the good news is it was right near where Terrence Cole went out of bounds, so it'll still be a huge return for the Gators as the ball will be moved back to around the midfield strike. So still a great return by Terrence Cole, and the Gators will have it first down and 10 at the 49-yard line. And at some point, you've got to wonder, does Terrence Cole start to play a part in the Gators' offense because of the way he's flashed on special teams last week and now this week? Certainly, you know, especially in a game like tonight where the decision might be a little out of reach and you don't want to get a guy like Reynolds potentially hurt, why not give the young guy a couple carries? Reynolds is the setback to the right-hand side of Sid Bryant. Play action. Toss left, pass complete to Selby, and Selby inside of Wolverines territory to the 49, ultimately just a two-yard gain. And slow to get to his feet, George Hill, who made the tackle for Woody High. Another score of note, scrolling through, Plum has taken out 28-3 lead over Fox Chapel. Nick Odom, that talented running back that gave the Gators some fits last year. Another couple touchdowns on the ground for a second consecutive week. Hand off to Reynolds, and he's met in the backfield and brought down. The Wolverines were all over that one. Tackle that time made by Maywan Rose. 6'3", 300-pound senior. Big fell up the gut. Wolverines have size, and we've seen quite a few plays where they've been able to blow things up in the trenches and stop Reynolds right in his tracks before he's been able to even get going. Bryant has a wide open. Kenny Lewis down that far sideline, still on his feet, down to the 10 yard line where he has finally wrestled down. But a huge gain for the Gateway Gators. Bryant to Lewis for a Gators first down. What a way to end the third quarter. And no laundry on the field, Adam. That one is going to stand. So the Gators will start the final quarter, albeit in quite a big hole, but knocking on the doorstep of getting some points in this one. And the Gators found themselves on the doorstep on their last possession as well, but came up empty. They certainly don't want to do so to begin this quarter number four, because while 27 points is a huge mountain to climb in quarter number four, you've got to do something to 
you know, get some offensive momentum, get the offense rolling a bit more heading into week number two and game number three next week at Pete Annamarino Stadium. Yeah, these games aren't going to get any easier. There's uh, no shortage of good teams that they're going to be running into this season. So next week, another test with North Hills. And you got right into conference play after that with, uh, with a, a Franklin Regional team. Sorry, blank there for just a second. That uh, was able to take it to you last year, and you want to be able to get some revenge. It'll be tough sledding for the Gators this year as far as that schedule goes, but they've got the talent. It's just about building that continuity and getting some of these young guys that are filling in for some big shoes that graduated last season, getting them in a position to continue to be successful. So this will be first and goal from the 10-yard line to start the fourth quarter, not overtime. It says fifth quarter on the scoreboard. It also says third and 11 as opposed to first and goal as this pass will be overthrown down towards that end line intended for Ahmad Harris. And that incompletion brings up second down and goal from the 10. Bryant, off of play action, tossing, and that pass is off the mark. Kenny Lewis cutting from right to left, and he cut well inside as that pass sails over his head, brings up third and goal from the 10. And luckily, Corday Weems had good coverage on that play, because if he had been a little bit further behind, he might have been able to contort his body and get up high enough to get that one. That one nearly intercepted. Bryant calling out the play here on third and goal from the 10. Bryant pressured, dumps it off. Cutting across up front is Ahmad Harris, who rumbles his way down to the five-yard line, bringing up a fourth and goal from the five. Well, he tried to go with that shuttle pass that worked so well early in the contest for the Wolverines. They were to get it to Zykeer Moore, who rumbled and stumbled his way down the field for a long gain. And at least you get something there. You know this is four down territory, so now just got to get five yards. Motion man is Lewis from left to right as Bryant rolls to the right. Throws it back against the grain. And leaping up, not able to pull it in, Ahmad Harris as he was in one-on-one -on -one coverage. And that incomplete pass is a turnover on downs. And again, the Gators come up empty with the ball inside of Wolverine's territory. Oh. Harris just timed that jump a little too early. It was a good play call. But then on the other end, the, the pass needed just a little bit more on it. Try to get that to the back of the end zone so that one doesn't hang up as much. And you see some real frustration there from Sid Bryant who's tried to do everything he can to will the Gators back into this one, but they've gotten so close, but no dice. And it was an 85-yard touchdown the last time for the Wolverines. Gators, can they pin their ears back and try and hem the Wolverines in, and more importantly, not give up another large chunk play here. New QB in for the Wolverines. is Landon Atkins. And Woodland Hills on the ground. And it's Jones. Out across the 10 to around the 11 yard line. Gain of about six, brings up second down and four. And without Walter in there, you'd have to think that the Wolverines are going to go run heavy here. Aikens in the power pistol is going to go to the ground again. Hand off to Jones. Jones, Jones is brought down. Back in the game, Mark Knight for the Gateway Gators making the tackle. 
I'm surprised that Scoop Smith is still in there if they're not going to have Walter in there, up 27. You'd think they might start turning their attention with their starters to next week's contest. And Penn Trafford, a team that has their hands full of McKee Sport tonight. And all of a sudden, after getting your doors blown off in week zero by Central Catholic, there's a clear path forward to two and one potentially for the Wolverines, who've looked impressive tonight. To the ground again go the Wolverines. This time, not enough for the first down as they get just a bit shy of the line of scrimmage. George Hill, 6'1", 225 pound tailback and linebacker who has certainly made his presence known every now and then tonight for Woody High. Well, you get the stop here on third and short. You have the punter punting out of his own end zone for the Wolverines, Jacob Ross. And more importantly, you've got an opportunity with Kenny Lewis standing with his heels just past the Woodland Hills 45, an opportunity to set yourself up with some really nice field position. That's not a terribly far punt. Lewis ran up and sort of dove under that one like a center fielder. Yeah, slid feet forward, feet first to grab a hold of that one. And Kenny Lewis frustratingly has uh, cramps again, it appears. So 8.48 to play here in the fourth quarter. And here in the second half, Vince, you've got to say that you know, Gateway has had their opportunities to put some points on the board. I don't know that they would have been able to come back the whole way and win this football game, but a lot of empty opportunities inside of Woody High territory here in half two. There's certainly flashes, even with, with Sid Bryant, who you want to commend a guy who who knows how long this week he knew that he was going to be thrust into this role. But as the backup quarterback has certainly looked at different points in this game like he belongs in the game and has been able to make some plays with his, his feet and his arm. Uh, but, yeah, just when push has come to shove, they haven't been able to, to have that killer instinct at him and get that ball into the end zone. And They've certainly had a number of possessions where they've gotten the ball into different parts of Wolverines territory and certainly on that last possession got into goal to go situation at the five yard line. But, you know, we're used to seeing the Gators of the past be able to have that killer instinct and score when needed. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if this team is able to develop that, that mental side of the game here as the season continues to go. Is there some, some young guys in new positions and every year it's a different team and there's different chemistry and now, luckily, these are non-conference matchups and an opportunity to lick your wounds and, and learn from it and go into Big East play feeling more confident in what your identity is. Big East play starting in two weeks from tonight. Of course, one more non-conference warm-up against the North Hills Indians at Pete Annamarino Stadium next Friday night before the Franklin Regional Panthers make the short trip from Murraysville to Monroeville to take on the Gateway Gators. And then we will travel to nearby Plum to take on the Mustangs and then the road trips get a little bit further as we'll head to Hemfield or rather Hemfield will come to uh, Gateway with revenge on their mind and then we will travel for the Battle of the Bell at Penn Trafford as the Gators take on the Warriors currently the Gators own the Bell now, that was a heck of a game last year 15 to 10 a real slugfest Gators came away from it with some strong defensive stands late I'm sure that'll be another game both teams really get up for. That's been a fun one the last few years. Pitch to the right for Reynolds. Reynolds inside of the 40. Carrying the ball to around the 35. Solid run on first down. And simple play call. Quick pitch. Get him the ball in space. And Reynolds falls forward more often than not whenever he's been able to get that motor going. See if they try and continue to keep him involved here on this drive. Brings up second down and about five. Toss to the right-hand side, completed, and over on that far boundary, Tristan Houston for the Gators with the catch. And a nice little spin and some yards after the catch, initiates some contact, falls forward. Gets an earful from the Woodland Hills cheerleaders. It's a complete <laughs> night for Tristan Houston. What more could you want? That was a nice catch and a nice, nice run after the catch as well. Bryant rolling left. Designed keeper for him. 
inside of the 20 where he will be brought down. Chased down from behind by big Maywan Rose. Talked about him, six feet three, 295 pounds. A little bit of cramping down there. Looks like that's Charles Harper, the six foot, 185 pound linebacker for the Wolverines. And they do, they have a ton of size. We talked about it earlier for the Wolverines, the size that they have inside. You look at their five linemen, again, averaging over 270 pounds. Antonio Nash, 6'3", 290. Pierce Cannon, 6'4", 295. Marcus Williams, 6'3", 313. All seniors. I mean, that's, that is a lot of size inside. That is for sure. And linebackers, no slouches. We've seen some of those guys tonight, like George Hill at 6'1", 225. Young man who's shaking up right now, Charles Harper, six feet, a little slender at 185, but he looks bigger than that, that's for sure. And then don't forget Lanier Butler on the end there, 6'3", 190 pounds. We've seen him come back into plays on the back end and make tackles from behind after he had been blocked out of the play. White shirt right there, Woodland Hills assistant coach, Maurice Walker, who was once a coach at Gateway, went back to his alma mater. Standout running back here at Woodland Hills and then played at Lock Haven. One of the best running backs Lock Haven University had ever seen. On the left-hand side of your screen, you see Cam Walter, the quarterback of the Woodland Hills Wolverines, whose father played basketball at Woodland Hills, Dave Walter, his older sister, a standout girls basketball player here at Woody High. She moved on to... School in the city, Point Park <laughs> University. Somehow that slipped my mind. Yeah, she went, uh, moved on to Point Park for her collegiate basketball career. Resume, second and eight. And we're back to live action with Bryant and the shotgun sidecar to his right and Reynolds. Bryant throwing right, the pass complete to Harper. And Harper, End over end, brought down over there on that far side, and again laying the lumber, George Hill for the Wolverines. And he's feeling that one. He's going to stay in, but my goodness, he got crumpled like a tin can there. Luckily, Harper able to get up to his feet. He'll stay in on this third and five. He's got Reynolds. Bryant pressured. Tosses right, the pass complete on that far side. It's, now they're going to say incomplete. Looked like Ahmad Harris had caught it, but we're pretty far away from where that play happened. If he would have been able to see him, Reynolds curled there. And that's who they were trying, I think, to get the ball to at the end of that play. But a nice route there by Reynolds. He just sort of settled in right past the sticks there. Bryant just missed him on that one. Would have been a first down and had the ball inside the five yard line. That's a tough miss there. But again, Four down territory, got to go for it here. The flag says third, the scoreboard says fourth. Bryant steps up into the pocket and he's wrapped and brought down at the 18 yard line. So it is a turnover on downs. The flag was wrong, not the scoreboard. So a turnover on downs again for Gateway after moving the ball into the Woody High red zone. Again, no dice for these Gators. They've gotten close on a bunch of occasions, but it's, it's the consistency of, of being able to continue to move the ball forward each and every play, even if it's not a huge chunk play. And too often, it's the Gators able to get some nice chunks here and there, but more often than not, being penalized or you know, missing a wide open receiver just past the sticks or having these little things that have kept them from being able to really put a, an entire complete drive together. Running left. Brandon Jones, and Brandon Jones with a lot of muscle there finally is brought down by Ahmad Harris. But Jones, who has seen action all four years of his high school career, 5'7", 170, carrying Gator tacklers. He talked about it, averaged about five yards a carry last year. Was touted coming into this season as 
we split the load last year, and certainly they've they've gotten the ball sprinkled in carries to Elijah Nesby, but he has been the guy tonight. And for Brandon Jones, this is his job to lose for the rest of the year, to be that, that bell cow, as we've talked about, for the Wolverines. He's done a good job so far tonight. Gator down, Mark Knight, who certainly had his issues not that long ago in the third quarter. Maybe early fourth down here to our right-hand side. He certainly had those cramps that caused a big delay. Those cramping issues uh, have certainly cost us a lot of delays this evening. Yeah, it's 9.30. We're seeing a lot of scores go final or have been final for some time across the region, and we still got a little under seven minutes to play here. Hope you don't have to be anywhere early tomorrow. I do. I don't. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> so both teams talking strategy here. You can see the Gators defense talking with Morty Ivey, who we talked about a week ago. They'll stand out here at Gateway High School and then at WVU before making his presence known and felt in the NFL ranks. Very similar story somewhere along that far sideline. You'll see a Gentleman with a gray beard and some blue shorts, Chris Edmonds. Standout career at Woodland Hills. Went to WVU, standout career there on the defensive side and played for the Cincinnati Bengals. That's what an experience for both of these squads that these young men get to just be surrounded by men who have played football at every level of consequence. So much information, so, so much to learn from those guys. So first and 10 for Woodland Hills with the ball at the 30-yard line. Walter remains in at quarterback, the sophomore, who earned his starting job in the second half of the game against Gateway a year ago. Running to the right-hand side is Jones, and Jones showing some power out towards the 35 before he is brought down by S.J. Morefield. Talked about Hemfield a little bit tonight. They suffered a surprising loss, 28-7 to Connellsville. Wow. So not a good look early in the year for the Spartans out toward Greensburg. Connellsville, one of those places where you and I have found ourselves out in the bleachers. In fact, our first year here at uh, Gateway, we were here sitting in a similar spot at the Wolverina, shivering as the game was winding down. And one week later, we were at Connellsville in our short shirt sleeves in the latter stages of the season. It's to the left goes the ground game for the Wolverines. And it is Brandon Jones again. Jones running harder and harder as this game goes on and feeling more and more confident in putting together a really solid performance tonight. Yeah, the, uh, the weather from week to week can sure be fickle here in a place where not only do you experience all four seasons throughout the year, but sometimes throughout the course of a day. I recall once in mid-May, maybe seven or eight years ago, there was a day where my family and I went to Kennywood. The sun shone, it rained, and it snowed all in the same day. Down to four minutes, 22 seconds remaining here in quarter four. Wolverines trying to drive the ball, kill the clock at the same time as Brandon Jones goes to his right, now tries to cut it back left. The Gators can't get him. And finally he'll be brought down and brought down inbounds, which will keep the clock running over there on that far boundary. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think he may have even slid toward the end. You talk about a, a veteran play, as we'll see here on the replay, he cuts it back. Able to make more than a few Gators miss and then sees himself going toward the sideline and gives himself up voluntarily to just keep that clock moving. That's a heady play by an upperclassman. An upperclassman who has had his share of experience here at Woodland Hills. As we've seen him blossom over four years of playing against the Gators.
Second down and about eight. To the ground. Go the Wolverines again. This time it's Elijah Nesby. 5'9", Junior. So scrolling through, looking at some different scores around. Looks like Penn Hill is going to coast away from Norwin pretty easily, 27-0. Not to surprise too many, although Norwin did give Upper St. Clair quite a scare last week. So worth noting over on the Allegheny side of things in 5A, but Peters Township, we talk about a team that people seem to really be high on. Took it to Seneca Valley in 6A tonight, 48-7. to It's a young Seneca Valley team, but still a pretty strong statement win. South Fayette with a 31-14 win over West Allegheny as well. Three backs behind Walter. And now he'll step under center. Carried himself. Trying to go left. Doesn't get enough for the first down. Brings up fourth down and one, though. Plum blowing out. Fox Chapel. Nick Odom with another touchdown run. Well, trying not to sound like a broken record throughout the season, but I really do think that's going to be a team that you know, they almost came back on the Gators last year, showed some real resiliency, and they, they bring a lot of pieces back. I think that's going to be a a team to watch in 5A, especially in a Big East. It just doesn't seem. I mean, Penn Trafford's looking like they're going to be staring at 0-2 after today. Might be some parity within that conference this year. Undoubtedly. We saw it a season ago with Franklin Regional beating the Gateway Gators, the Gateway Gators beating Penn Trafford, and then Penn Trafford beating Franklin Regional. Cam Walter, yeah. Cam Walter able to push his way forward for a Woodland Hills first down. 145 as this clock continues to wind. This game all but elementary as the Gators are going to fall to 0-2 this season. And just seven points in eight quarters. You talk about, we talked about from two years ago to last year, the Gators had scored 101 less points. Went from averaging 34 points a game down to about 25 points a game. And now you're going to be through two games, albeit against some pretty athletic defenses, with just seven points to show for. That's, I know we didn't have Brad Birch in the lineup tonight for, for the Gateway Gators, but that is just almost unheard of with the amount of playmakers and talent that this Gators offense has had year over year over year to be just stymied that much through eight quarters of play. Walter takes the knee and maybe one more snap is necessary before the Woodland Hills Wolverines even out their season at one and one. The Gators will fall to 0 and 2. You got the Gatorade bath for the first year coach Brian Tarrant getting his first win as a the head coach for the Wolverines and what a really top to bottom complete effort by the Wolverines it wasn't without their mistakes at certain points they certainly had penalties throughout the game that stymied them from accomplishing more but that connection between Walter to Scoop Smith, my goodness, that's something that the rest of 5A is going to have to really keep an eye on for the rest of the season and the next two after that. Well, the Woodland Hills Wolverines were certainly ready for the Gateway Gators tonight here in Turtle Creek. Yeah, like I said, a complete effort top to bottom. Defensively, they were physical. Uh, they limited opportunities. And the Gators, they had opportunities, but when they got deep into territory, they weren't able to execute them. You know, you hope that Birch is able to come back next week or within the near future and that that rectifies some of those things, having your number one quarterback who has over 6,500 yards passing in his career. But at the end of the day, you still have a lot of veterans in that offensive lineup, and it's discouraging to see that they weren't able to get it done tonight on the offensive side of the ball, make this a more competitive game than it was because there's definitely some flashes there. There's some things there. This is an 0-2 team that's, you know, not had a very productive eight quarters on the scoreboard, but there's something there. and They're going to have games this season where they have the opportunity to, to work this out. They've got one more non-conference game where they're going to be able to kind of work this out a little bit. I thought in the second half, Sid Bryant settled down pretty well and was able to do some things offensively for the Gateway Gators, getting out of the pocket, throwing the ball a lot better than he did through the first two quarters. Certainly, and if he is, is pressed into action moving forward, he looks like someone who, who can belong out there, who can make some plays, and hopefully they continue to dial things up where he's able to get the ball out of his hands quickly and get it into the hands of playmakers like Kenny Lewis, like Derek Selby. Uh, and I was really encouraged, and Amari Gans looked really good with the ball in his hands a few times there in the second half against a very athletic Wolverines defense. What I thought also was encouraging is as the game went on, that 
uh, gateway defensive line, or offensive line rather, started to settle down, started to protect the quarterback and open some holes for the running game as well. And these are two really big teams that they faced in the first two games of the season. With Mount Lebanon, we talked about Connor Young, someone who's playing at Navy next year, and, and a lot of size for Mount Lebanon and a big school in 6A. And Wolverines, we talked about the numbers on their, their offense and defensive linemen. A lot of size there. So you'd think moving forward, these are two really tough tests. Hopefully the water the level <laughs> goes down a little bit and the Gators have an opportunity to you know, take some things away from this and excel against smaller teams. I know last season neither of us were able to be on the call for that game against North Hills between the Gateway Gators and the North Hills Indians up in the North Hills of Pittsburgh, and they will host North Hills next week. It's got to be a bounce-back game for the Gators. You really feel that way in North Hills. They haven't set the world on fire early in their season either. They got drubbed by Bethel Park in the first game of the season, and so you hope that the Gators, who, who still look at themselves as contenders in 5A, are able to right that ship a little bit and get back to playing the way they know that they can and, and start to see the results that they're used to. The Gateway Gators are now 0-2 on the season, while the Woodland Hills Wolverines even up their record at 1-1. One one. Your final thoughts tonight, Vince? Another complete effort from a tough team that the Gators had to run into and another sort of asterisk with the, the injuries that they had out there. But it's, it's next man up, and you've got to get out there and try to play your game and um, defensively, there were some things that we saw throughout the game that we really liked, but they were out there for a long time once again tonight. And again, you just got to find a way to score points. You know, it, it, you can talk about it at length a lot, but uh, at the end of the day, it's whoever scores more points. And the Gators have really struggled with that through eight quarters. Fans, don't forget, next week we're going to have girls soccer in the middle of the week. And then, of course, we will have the Gateway Gators football game as they host the North Hills Indians. And Vince and I will be on the call for that one. That'll do it for our coverage this evening here on GatewayGatorProductions.com. For our entire crew, my broadcast partner, Vince Russo, I'm Adam Gusky, thanking you for joining us here in Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania.